So you already know how important it is to be building your influence with online video, but it can be really scary to get on camera and really build the confidence to share your message on video. So the Think Media team and I traveled out here to Orange County to connect with Shaleen Johnson. She's a New York Times bestselling author, and she's coached thousands of people on how to build their confidence to get on camera. So in this video, Heather sits down with her to get her five best tips for punching fear in the face, punching perfectionism in the face, and pressing record. Let's check it out. Hey, Heather here with Think Media, bringing you the best tips and tools for growing your influence with online video. And I am so excited today to be sitting down with Shalene Johnson, who has coached thousands of people of how to be confident on camera. And we are going to dive into five amazing tips today. So thanks for being on today, Shalene. Absolutely. Thanks for the intro. Great. So being confident on camera is really hard when you start out. It feels awkward, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah. And when you're just starting, you have coached people through these five tips that we're going to go over that are really going to help them get from not being able to even turn on the camera to being able to go live and do stories and really build their confidence Be on themselves. camera. Yes. So yeah. tell me about tip number one. Um, I think it's really important that people get out of their heads. So my first tip is one that someone gave to me and it really made such a difference in how I felt on camera. And that is to, instead of thinking about what everyone's thinking about me and all these people are going to watch the video is to think about one person. Mm. So I uh, got the advice when I filmed my first fitness video that I should literally bring a photo of the person who I am creating this video for. Like just think of one person who I would want to take care of and to tape their photo just below the lens. And now whenever I'm filming, I don't try to think of all the people who are going to watch it. I think about just one person. And so, it, and it really helps to think of someone who you actually know. Yeah. And, you know, we teach here on Think Media to really find your tribe or find your audience. Yeah. And so even just narrowing that down to one person can right. really make an impact because you can speak to them, just that one person. It's so much more conversational versus like you being a presenter or a talking head. Yeah. Um, it, it's just so much easier to relate and to be yourself. Oh, I love that. And what's tip number two? Tip number two is not to script anything, but to use bullets. I mean, you have to remember, you know your content. If you don't, you probably shouldn't be doing a video. And it should be conversational. It, it shouldn't feel forced or rehearsed. You're going to stumble over words. Keep People love that. And nobody likes perfect. People like imperfections. So just start with a, a list of bullets and then riff. You know, yes. you know this stuff. You can always edit it down if it doesn't come out perfect, but perfect isn't as fun as imperfect anyways. Yeah. And I, I made that mistake. I started using scripts because I thought yeah. I need to make sure I get all these words in. Yeah. And then it just felt really unnatural because I was reading rather than just yeah. talking. And I mean, you can see it. Too. I was going to say, we, we've we all seen videos like that where you're like, well, I wonder what this person's really like. Yes. And you want to be likable and you can't, people can't even know who you are if you're reading from a script. Yeah. So good. What's number three? get yourself in the right mood ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we talked about how it's like Beyonce music or just music in general puts me in the right mood. I also, I have to be relaxed. So I will watch or listen to comedy. Mm. Um, you know, anything, anytime I'm laughing, I just remember that it, people are so much more likable when they're relaxed and at ease and they can laugh at themselves. So comedy and music are two things I'll do to get myself in the right mood. I love that. When I started doing video, I was so nervous. So I started on Snapchat. Oh, with yeah. no followers. And I would play Beyonce music before I would create my stories because it would just get me pumped up and I'd be able to just talk and not freeze up yeah. when I got on camera. That's so good. Yeah. I mean, Snapchat, all of these like quick video, micro videos, all these platforms that allow for that now are such great ways to get practice because you start learning to speak in sound bites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. And what's number four? Number four is to go with your bullets and, and just start talking about them out loud to someone else so that you get in the habit of realizing, okay, here's what I want to say. Here's the words I want to use. And, and when you have this dialogue with someone else and are talking about it and the camera's usually in the room, it just gets you more relaxed. It's almost like a rehearsal run without having to do it on camera or just turn the camera on and just riff through it a couple of times because as you go through it, like your second and third take is always better. Yeah. Because you're more relaxed, you're more concise, you're more confident. 
don't feel like you have to be one and done. I love that. I used to take those, I took that advice and I used to take the, those mess ups yeah. and I made them into B-roll at the end. It's and people so love seeing yes. kind of the messiness of video. It really is just conversational. That's right? my favorite part. Yeah. The bloopers. It's so fun. Uh, tip number five. Tip number five is a bonus point. It's not for everybody, but you know, sometimes if you are just so in your head and you cannot be yourself, have a glass of wine, have a cocktail, have an adult beverage if you're of age, just and so that you can just relax. It takes the edge off. You can be yourself a little bit more. Now, I'm not encouraging you to become a drinker every time you go live or go on camera, but some people, that's what they need to just get started, to get over the hump the first time. Mm -hmm. And I think especially for women, I don't know if you find this to be true, but I think it's harder for us. Mm -hmm. I just do. Mm -hmm. A guy, what's there to look at? They don't, they're not wearing earrings. We're not picky about their makeup. We're not overanalyzing their hair and their outfit. We're like, that's good content. Yeah. But with women, we, we are the hardest on each other mm -hmm. and therefore we're the hardest on ourselves. Yes. So just know that you you know, you're not going to please everybody. I don't rewatch my stuff because I'm like, I just got to get it out there and not worry and pick myself apart. If I did that, I, I wouldn't produce more content. Yeah. So you just have to think about who it is you're serving and get out of your own head. Yeah. I used to do that too. I used to retake the IG stories a hundred times, yeah. not a hundred, but a lot of times <laughs> because I wanted it to feel perfect. And I think a lot of times when you're building confidence on camera, it's like a muscle, right? You, yes. you got to just keep doing it. You got to keep messing up. You got to start messy yeah. so that over time you are, you're just talking to the lens and you know that the other person on that on the other side of the camera is the person that needs your content. Yeah. So in just a second, I have one more question for you, Shaleen, but okay. Think Media, I'd love to know what's your tip for being confident on camera? Let me know in the comment section below. But, you know, you did say that for women, it can be a little bit different. And I think this is a unique situation, right? Yeah. Here on Think Media, we we have, you know, uh, we have men and women who are sure. interested in the content that we're producing. And so yeah. you said that it can be different for women. And I want to just affirm that, that I do believe it can be different mm -hmm. for women. Can you speak to that a little bit? I think that just so many, I mean, I've trained thousands and thousands of people to go on camera and share their story, share their expertise. And I find that women struggle with it the most because they are, they're so critical of how they come across on camera that they don't want to produce the content or they hate their voice. Mm -hmm. They hate the way they look. So some, you know, some tips to help you with that is number one, use good lighting. Mm -hmm. Like good lighting is freaking everything. And if you don't want to invest in like a ring light, mm -hmm. which I think is a must, but if you're not ready to do that, making sure you're using great light by just standing in front of a window, like lighting is everything. It can really change your appearance and don't be afraid to put on some makeup, like be yeah. intentional about it and, you know, watch some YouTube videos to figure out how to put lashes on or whatever. If you, if you look your best, spend a little time doing that. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel better about the content. And then eventually you just have to put it up and realize that there's always going to be somebody who is prettier, taller, thinner, whatever. Who cares? You've got a message to share with the world. Get it out. Wow. That was a great tip, Shalene. Thank you so much for that. And, you know, Sean did an entire playlist with Shalene with all of her social media tips that are amazing. So definitely check out that playlist and we'll catch you in the next video. to the countdown. Point. I mean, you still did not get it right. You're so good at this, at getting things wrong. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Popcorn's Just Langa Popcast. I am Nina, and this is Amin, who's supposedly my tech guy who keeps getting... You know, I was just about to tell everybody that, whoa, your intro, like 15 seconds, like so new AG. And then I'm like, where, where, where am I? <laughs> That's what happened when you cut short the 10 seconds that I wanted. <laughs> it's supposed to be 20 seconds, okay?
And she insisted yeah, yeah, yeah. that every, every episode has a technical failure. I think I think he Amin and me uh, me and Pauline are convinced that Amin has bad karma with technology in a past life or something. You know, um, I don't know what we're gonna do. We'll figure it out. But anyway, welcome back, everybody. How is everybody doing? Um, and today is Al Muharram, right? Amin. Al Muharram today, yes. Yes. Salam al hijrah everyone. Salam um, al-hijrah, everyone. Who's in the house, by the way? I've got like um, Sheikh Izam. Hi, welcome. Abjal is Hansa. here. Abjal, Abjal uh, Mark, you hi. Yep, okay. And uh, today is our first time on YouTube as well, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, uh, what we love about StreamYard is that they give us a free uh, one more account. So now we now we can go live on three three places. So we are okay, live so on YouTube. Facebook and LinkedIn. Yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, what is um? I mean, what is Mal Hijra about before we proceed? Uh, so for those of you who do not know, uh, one thousand four hundred and forty-two years ago, uh, hi Abby. So our, our prophet, Prophet Muhammad, uh, who was basically at that time, uh, uh, he was spreading Islam, and he was in the Jewish situation. So he kind of like decided that uh, he migrated from Mecca to Medina, which is I think about 300 uh, plus over kilometer from from Mecca. Uh, and that 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 significant day, that significant uh, uh, moment, uh, is considered as the first year of the Islamic calendar. All right. Okay. So the the whole migration was uh, was important because uh, it it started. Uh, as it marks the beginning of the Islamic calendar and Islam starts to spread because of that. So the migration work, and I think it's very significant for us this year because kita banyak migration this year, kan? Yes, Dari okay. Part, so yeah, for us, like life event. Yeah, for us, it's, for us personally. For me personally, I think it's a significant year. Lah. I think also for for Muslims, it's um it's a significant migration because it's from being oppressed to where they could really um allow themselves to freely practice their religion so similarly for us in popcorn this year has been a pretty huge migration year in the sense that oh, we're yeah. moving from offline to online so on behalf of popcorn uh i guess we would like to say thank you so much to all our students and to our community for inspiring us and you know for and, and i guess we in turn inspire you guys to get online as well and to start becoming business influencers and content creators right i mean yeah, uh, yeah, and thank you so much for trusting us and still being with us throughout the whole 23 episode of us uh, going live, right? Is it 23 uh, already? It's, yeah. It's today's okay. episode 23, right? Well done. Wow. Okay, so well done to us. Good job. Not like the egg fried no. rice lady. Not good job. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay, so who's on a digital migration journey with us? Say yes in the comment section. Hi to yes, Abby. Yes, yes. Hi to Viv and Cash Quinn. Nice to meet you. Okay. So and how would so since we're talking about digital migration, um, how would you like us to support you? What do you guys want to learn? Who do you guys want us to interview? Um, what and and what do you guys want to learn? Let us know in the comment section so we can support you guys. Okay. Now speaking yeah. of support, what's coming up in the popcorn verse universe? That is for August and September. I mean, uh, so August. Uh, so next week we are bringing Sujimi back. Okay. All right. Yeah, which is uh, going to be quite uh, awesome because this is like uh, because of the request that we got from people who came in for the first interview and they wanted more Sujimi. So we kind of managed to get Sujimi to come back for the second interview. Yep. And then, so then, then next week. yeah, so that's happening on the 27th August. And okay. on the 29th, we actually have our uh, monthly intensive killer all star LinkedIn profile uh, that's happening mm -hmm. on the 29th. Okay. Um, just to let you guys know, if you want to start your digital journey with us, this is one of the best places to start, and it's very affordable. Uh, we're giving it yeah. out for ninety nine right now. I think we're going to increase because we've been told by our mentors that we're too cheap. We're undervaluing yeah. ourselves. So please so, come for the next few. I think we're still going to have that price for September. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, okay. yeah, just for September. Yeah. So okay, please so. come and join us because this will be the start of your digital journey with us. And from there, we'll be able to um, see and, and see what your goals are and how we can assist you. Okay. Now, right. um, and the next following week, we have Alan Pang. Yeah. Alan Pang is coming okay. up. All right. So we're going to learn about eSport marketing. Yay. Yes. <laughs> and how you guys can apply it in your business. Okay. And the following week, we've got two more speakers that we've secured. We have 
we also have uh, uh, uh this one if you were in chasing uh, one of our students class he's fantastic at viraling uh, his writings have been viral like god knows how many thousand times um mm -hmm. so this um this is one of the guys that chasing adores so he's going to be talk he's a personal branding and um does his own podcast on personal branding so he's going to be covering visibility is more important than ability itself so definitely true we're seeing that uh right i mean yep. Yep. so that's yep. what's going to happen and the following week on 17th september Kita ada We've Yasmin got Yasmin Katir from Singapore, but yeah. she's not Singaporean. Um, she's going to be talking about remote selling 101. Discover the top three skills you need to sell remotely. Happening on Thursday, 17th September, 8.30. Okay. So uh, with that, we're going to go into today's episode, right? So if we are going to help you guys on your digital content journey, one of the most fundamental things that we need as content creator or as a business influencer, if you like, is confidence and the unwavering conviction of who we are so exactly. one of the most common questions we get from our student is can i post this will this make me look bad what else i mean uh takut camera <laughs> uh -huh. uh, but if I say this people will catch on me you know what yeah. else what will people think especially you know coming from asian what will people think what will my dog think what will my banana think you know yeah uh, what else? Apa, cakap, right? yeah, Ma makcik bawang, um, yeah uh, i'm not confident i'm not pretty now mm. what else i mean uh there's, there's just too many right? i think there's even a scientific uh explanation for this i think we're going to cover that afterwards all right we're yeah talk okay about that. so today enough is enough people we at popcorn have had it you know all you lovely people because we think you guys are amazing and the days of us not being good enough is over because we're going to sort it out in today's episode so if you guys are ready let's just lung up hit the intro video i mean I All like right, that popcorn <laughs> All right, welcome back, popcorners, on FB Group, LinkedIn, and YouTube. I am Nina. And I'm Amin. And welcome to Popcorn's Just Langa Podcast, where we cover the latest on content creation, social media, entrepreneurship, and tech to help you guys position yourselves as business leaders and industry authorities out there through content creation. Now, in other words, we're on a mission to build Southeast Asia's business influencers. So if this is something that excites you, you want to follow us on all our social media. Okay, I mean, we'll put yeah. it up in the link. So today we're on a quest to get you guys on camera and speaking confidently in public. Now, believe it or not, I mean, would you agree if I were to say we do not, we do not come out of our mother's womb speaking confidently and flawlessly. And yet yeah. somehow everyone has this unreasonable expectation that the first time they get on camera, they're going to look at the camera and they're going to start talking like a Hollywood star and the words coming out of their mouth will be, ah! and everybody will start following you and listening to you and buy your where, products. Where, where do they get all this belief from? I don't know, but I think it's quite interesting. I, I mean, everybody know. thinks you're you're supposed to get it right first time around. It does not happen, but we are here yeah. to tell you that you can achieve this ah, hood if and only if you try like a hundred times okay because it's just like learning how to walk or learning how to talk you got to make all the mistakes you got to try and try and try until you get and it is something mm -hmm. that can be learned groomed and developed and today we're gonna get you started okay shortcut sounds good sounds good let's go okay let's go uh, let's go all right so welcome to the zero to hero muhammad flavor Farouk's guide to being confident professional and bold on the big stage now before i introduce you to the speaker if you guys have any questions or you have any comments or whatever just put it in the comment section okay sounds good type yes okay <laughs> Okay, now today's speaker is Mohammad Farouk. He's also known as Flavor in the international world of esports, having started his esports career in 2012 as the very first esports commentator and shoutcaster in Malaysia. Now he's done two dot uh, sorry, he's done Dota 2 commentaries alongside world-renowned talents, the likes of David Parker Gods, Owen Davis, OD Pixel, 
Okay, I cannot pronounce this. Jorian Bender, uh, Shiver, Andrew Zuri Campbell, and many others. Now, Flavor is considered a professional events host, and he's emceed for major esports events such as World Electronic Sports Games Southeast Asia 2019 and Esports Industry Professional Conference or Epic 2019. And of course, Level Up Biz 2019 and Level Up Play 2019 and 2020 by MDEC. So, Flavor is also the director of communications for the National Esports Association of Malaysia, the Malaysian Electronic. Sports Federation or MESF. So without further ado, Popcorn Fam, please welcome Muhammad Flavor Hey guys. Hey. 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 I guys. Mean, was that like the sound that I've never heard? I was expecting yeah, like this. Like, yeah. again. I, okay. I think you guys had like a like an amazing intro video for you guys just now. Like I thought it was gonna be like some audience, you know, digital audience audience clap and all that coming in. No, no, no. Okay, Far, you're gonna have to sit a little bit because I cannot see. Yeah, okay, cool. Sonic. Now right. again, before we start um asking questions, feel free to ask your questions in the comment section or if you have anything to say, just share it there. Okay. So first things first, Farouk, can you share a little bit about you and how you started public speaking and your journey to where you are? Because you weren't I mean, you didn't always, well, basically you started out kind of, you sucked, right? When you first started. Oh, <laughs> That's oh, what yeah. you told me. <laughs> um, it, it's kind of hard to describe how I started right here. Um, I started doing public speaking when um, I was uh, 12 years old, guys. I think I was then at six. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, like, I think I'm, I'm okay when I, you know, learning English and then in school, I thought I was good. Let's be honest. I thought I was good. Okay. Okay. So I signed up for this competition called the Star Public Speaking Competition. Apparently, it's a huge competition in Malaysia. It's like a maze balls kind of like the level is like national or something. So I went there to Manara the Star, like uh, Section 17, though. And the the told ring it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, to the competition. When I arrived there, you know, I was like the skate where it's stand at six with all the other kids. It's an open competition. You could be stand at five, stand at four, stand at three, and all that. But little did I know that when I arrived, I met all the other kids. The other kids, you know, kita makan makan with pizza, whatever the organizer bagi tu kan. Dude, the kids, they sounded like Oxford level kids, you know. They're like kids, standard six, like me, standard five. But then their English was like, man, out of this world. So I was like, okay. man, I don't know what I signed up for. I was, I did not belong in that world, okay. That, that world was at like the world of elites. Uh -huh. And uh, Man, I, I I regret signing up. You know, I regret mm -hmm. approaching my teacher. I not joined tournament. Oh man, it was horrible. Yeah, I was the seventh speaker. So basically, there were a lot of people. There were like around thirty people from different schools and all that. I pakai baju sekolah biasa. Some of them are like pengawas, baju color biru lah, color purple, mm -hmm. color orange, and whatever. Some of them have suits. Yeah, I didn't have a suit again. And, uh, and I overheard this one girl, young speaking Oxford, Oxford Harvard level, me uh -huh. spoke during the, the whole, uh, the whole makan makan session in the breakfast. Uh -huh. The thing is, she was first because she was the uh -huh. first person to go up, okay, for the competition. And okay, and the competition started. She sounded so amazing during that time. She went up on stage and she couldn't say a word. She had like a stage fright, something she kind of like, you know, things happened and she was like, and then she she cried and then left the hall. Oh my so God. That, yeah, <laughs> if it, I were you, I'd be like, ah! <laughs> it, it, it was horrible because at that moment, I went, it, you, you must be thinking, like, I'm, was I going to laugh? Right? No, I didn't laugh. I was thinking to myself that if that girl who was like that Harvard level, tak boleh cakap a single shit. Apatah lagi aku ni kan. So macam, yeah. oh man, she can't deal with the pressure. I'm going to lose this so badly. So uh, what happened? Uh, what happened was when it was my turn, the thing uh -huh. about me was that I wasn't like impromptu. I knew English and my teacher bagi I satu tajuk ni nama dia The Greenhouse Effect. Okay. I know it's boring. It's a boring topic, okay? Uh -huh. So since I wasn't this impromptu kind of guy, I kind of memorized the stuff and I was lazy. So I didn't memorize the whole speech. So I memorized satu perenggan. Like in less than a minute, I check out whatever I did, and then I was like, "Thank you, I do do." Okay, and then okay. I knew I knew Kalah already lah. Let's put it this way: I did, I knew I was gonna okay. lose. Okay, mm -hmm. the winner wow. of the, the public speaking competition was actually my cousin, which I didn't know was participating. Okay, oh, he's wow. like he's like two years older than me, so his name mm -hmm. is Faris. Mm -hmm. Uh, he won. Man, uh, we were basically you know he's he's my cousin. I didn't know our level. His English was like top of the notch right he's like a maze balls and me i was like eh so i was kind of like sedia i was like and eh, i lost so badly 
you know, I, I did get jealous over my cousin because he won it, right? Because I didn't know, you know, I thought as much as we're family, now I know my my where my where I stand in mm -hmm. society when it comes to public speaking. So that was my journey, and that is where my journey ended. After that, I didn't join. I was traumatized. I did not join any more public speaking competition. So that was a hey, start. So how but did I can, you get I can relate, yeah. where you are? Okay, I, what, how, why can you relate? I mean, I okay, I I can relate to the girl that decided to leave, run away, and cry. Yeah, ran away because that happens to me too in my English one or two class in KDU when I was studying in college. Oh my goodness! Uh, okay, I was I was totally prepared, right? Everything has already been hand, uh, been handled, and at that time we don't have PowerPoint, right? But yes. the only thing that we have is the is the stupid OHP where we have to go to the printer and print it out, right? So everything is already prepared. And the moment I stand at the front of the room, and there's not many people in the room, right? there's only I think about eight or twelve of them. I look at the crowd, I look at the lecturer, and I told her, Miss Santa, I can't do this. I remember her name until today. Her name is Santa Zachariah, right? Uh -huh. I can't if do only this. She right? can I, I have now. Like sweat coming out of my head. I just walk out from the room. And that was it. The fear is real. But yeah, totally. <laughs> scary. So you <laughs> did the first girl, the, the Oxbridge girl, the Oxford girl. Yeah, exactly. I did the Oxford girl. So I can relate to what she's feeling. <laughs> right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, so the fear so. is real. Okay. Yeah, the, the fear is real. It's real. Okay. It's real. Like, I can vouch for that. Like, yeah, I went through that crazy, mm. you know, I didn't know what I signed up for. You know, I was signing so, myself up for failure. That was for sure. Okay. So how did you move from there to, you know, being an international yeah. esports commentator? Where, why did you decide to try again? Um, because that, that is the like the early stage of life, you know, that was like standard uh -huh. six. So uh -huh. in diploma, um, I, I studied in, I studied UITM for diploma. It was uh -huh. UITM Sagamat Johor. Okay. okay, and it was kind of like- and People uh, don't yeah. speak English there, right? I mean, right? I'm not trying to say anything. Do the kids speak English there? Do they actually encourage you to speak English? Oh no, man! I I, uh -huh. I don't dare to speak English in UIT. Have because nanti kena kacam kan? You will be ridiculed, right? Do I I I did try to speak English. Like it wasn't like in an outside thing or a scenario or anything. It was like English class. They hated me for it. I was like, I didn't know it was a taboo to speak English here. It's like no. Really? The thing is, the the thing is. Uh, I think because they thought since I'm a Malay and then it's like I'm like used to because everybody was Malay there, right? Like, I know, but mm. this is English class, right? <laughs> like, no, 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 no. So that's when I realized because this happened during my early semesters. So I kind of had a self-realization that uh, it was not a safe space for me to speak English during that time. All right, and I don't think my my Malay cakap Melayu biasa normal lah. I think I think I can speak normal Malay, but cakap Melayu yang baku like berdebat and um, berdebat mm -hmm. and all that. I can't do that. I mean, like this. Okay. So what I did was uh, I joined the public speaking um, club. So sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no. Is uh, I joined the debate club. Okay. okay. In UITM. Uh, yes, in UITM. I joined the English debate club, um, and it was actually much easier than doing public speaking. So it's actually a joint thing. It's a debate and public speaking club. But I get to okay. choose whether whether I get to do public speaking or debate. Okay. And, um, and how was it easier? In in what sense? Okay, so this is how it's easier, okay? Just like public speaking, you're required to actually speak for seven minutes. But the thing mm -hmm. about debate is that you can cheat. The way you cheat is that um, the first, uh, how, this, is, this is like the, the, the newbie, new kind of way of cheating in public speaking, okay? Uh, the first half a minute, you can cheat by introducing yourself. Hi, my name is Mohammed Farouk. Today, we're going to be talking on the topic, this house believes that you know, prostitution, prostitution should be legalized in Malaysia and whatever, all that. And me, I, I will be standing on the government side. You know, it's more or less explaining things which has already been explained at the start mm -hmm. of the debate. What you should be doing is you should just jump straight into the topic. You don't have to do all this. But so it's basically, good, boring. Ah. <laughs> yeah, boring. So that's half an hour. It's a half a minute gone. Another okay. six minutes and a half more to go. Yeah. And the thing about debate is that um you can cut off another you can shave off another minute or minute and a half by accepting questions from your opponents so if your opponent gives a point of information you can just take it in and you can use that to shave off a few more minutes so if i shave off like a minute and a half plus that half a minute i have five more minutes to speak okay compared to public speaking where it's five minutes 
Mm -hmm. And like these are all cheat sheets, okay? Out mm -hmm. of the five minutes, I can also cut off another two minutes by by doing rebuttals or going against the points that the previous speaker has spoken about. So, for example, mm -hmm. the speaker talked about this. So I can attack on that rather than focusing mm -hmm. on my point. Okay. So, so now I have like three minutes to speak on my point, okay? okay. But do not follow these guidelines because this is like a horrible guideline to follow because this is like the way how to speak a full seven minutes as a newbie. So okay. if you're like going into a professional doing debate, right now I, I only speak like six minutes fully on the point and one mm -hmm. minute on rebuttals only. Okay, got it. So, and that's how, that was kind of like a, a stepping stone towards public speaking for you then? Yes. Because you were Correct. comfortable, right? Okay. And Correct. then how did you get into esports commentating? Um, okay, esports commentating is a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. When I started off in 2012, there was no such thing as an Asian dude or an Asian chick or an you know, Asian girl, Asian guy. Uh, doing commentaries on esports, not on Dota 2, not on Dota 1, not even Dota 2, not even StarCraft 1, uh, Counter Strike uh, 1.6 back in the days, or any of those esports game titles, right? Um, it would always be an American or somebody from the EU uh, or somebody from Australia and much more. The thing is, because uh, it's kind of like a norm where you actually have a Westerner. You know, or an Australian to actually do commentaries on esports games. Uh, and I think it's probably because no Asian has already tried to do such a thing. So mm -hmm. knowing this, this is something new, right? So I needed to force a market to open up because it's non-existent. So what I did was I approached three of the biggest companies, esports or gaming companies in Malaysia uh, directly and asked them if they're willing to actually hire me as a commentator for their tournaments. So I approached mm -hmm. three companies in specific. One of them is Orange Esports. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the organization that has the most amount of cyber cafes in Malaysia. At one point, mm -hmm. they had 50 cyber cafes in Malaysia. And mm -hmm. they, why I approached them is because they organize small, small esports tournaments. Mm -hmm. Number two was uh, E-Club. Uh, e E-Club is actually the official um, merchandise provider for Valve. If you guys know the uh, the Steam platform, Valve. Mm -hmm. official platform. So they were the organized Asian cyber games. And the okay. third one was Cindy Mutera Multimedia's SMM, the biggest uh, Dota 1 organizer in South Asia back in the day. Okay, and what did they say? Yeah, they said yes. Surprisingly, all three of them said yes. I was like, okay. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, and um, it all started from there. They gave me opportunity to actually do commentaries for the small events. Did they pay you for this? They did. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And oh, they paid wow. me so well, even better than whatever MC everybody's doing right now in 2020, truth be honest. Like wow. somebody kind of destroyed okay. the market in some way along the way. But yeah, okay. uh, they paid well. And um, I didn't have a portfolio to begin with. So they just had to trust their instinct on hiring me during that time. Mm -hmm. uh, I had mm -hmm. to show them, I had to produce some videos so that they would actually get confident in hiring me for the events. Uh, it was not easy at all. It was definitely not okay. easy. But obviously, from from you know the debate days to there, you were doing a lot of emceeing as well in between, right? To to kind yeah. of prepare yourself. Right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. So basically, you just tried. You just got up and tried and tried and kept doing it, right? Yeah. Correct. Very sure. Okay. Got it. Okay. So um, since we're um, apart from today, you also hold classes, right? What kind yes, of classes do. do you? Have? Okay. If you can share with us a little bit. Um, uh, right now I'm holding classes for, uh, the FSC Academy. So it's an esports Academy where I teach people about job opportunities in esports. Um, uh -huh. because a lot of people think that esports is just restricted to just people being, uh, esports players and all that. Uh, uh -huh. but for this Academy, since I have been in esports team for the longest time, uh, mm -hmm. I do want to educate people about what other opportunities you have in there. For example, especially on the talent side of things, where you can mm -hmm. end up being a commentator, a caster, and not just uh, a general caster, but a color caster, or an analyst, or a desk host, or even a, um, you know, th there's other things that you can explore being a talent right here. Okay, I'm uh, sorry, what is an e-caster or a desk caster? Could you quickly explain this? Because oh, somebody okay. out there might want to try their luck, right? Yeah. All right, uh, let, let's start by differentiating between what an MC is and what is a host. Mm. An okay. MC is actually more or less like a host. You know, people kind of find, find it hard to actually differentiate them. But an MC usually caters to a, to a real audience, meaning that there's physical audience present in front of you. If you're mm -hmm. a host, you're mainly in, uh, 
how does interacting with people online when during with people through you know, through webcams or cameras and all that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um now let's talk about color casters and also analysts now mm -hmm. color casters are mostly famously known as play-by-play -play casters where they are usually the hype casters in the game you know whenever there's a team fight going on or anything interesting during the the game itself they'll be the guy who'll be hyping things up so for example a team fight is about to occur right here he'll be addressing play by play about what's about to come what to expect what is going on at the moment much more that makes the game entertaining and then the wow. other guy is actually the analyst more like mm -hmm. the analytical caster where he would actually bring down the tone and explain um face by face about what happened in detail right because the hype cast mm. is mostly addressing things that is being seen by the viewers but this guy is more or less doing like uh breaking breaking it down to a micro level on what really happened what could have happened and more yeah wow, so th that's, that, so that's the difference between those things that is why okay. in any esports event if they hire two commentators one of them has to be a color slash uh, play by play caster or hype caster and the other one has to be an analyst because you can't afford to actually have two hype casters or two analysts because right. it'll be either boring mm -hmm. or it'll be too hyped like, up. Uh, it's not too hyped up it doesn't make sense to actually put two hype uh. casters because later one guy has to give in and say because at the start if there are occurrences where two hype casters are being hired but at mm -hmm. the start it'll be like hey nina since both of us are actually hype casters so let's decide who's going to be doing that, be the hype caster for this match. And somebody has to end up being an analyst in this. So let's okay. say, for example, I, I, I take a step back. Like, Nina, you know what? You can become the hype caster for this. Let me become the analyst. So you know okay. your role is the hype caster. So you are a hype caster or an analyst? I'm a hype caster. Oh. Yeah, I'm a hype caster. You're, you're a cull caster then? Yeah. Okay, got it. So do you immediately specialize into a certain area or you can switch? Just wondering. I think um, I, I can do both uh, because mm -hmm. I think that if you're professional enough, you're able to actually accommodate to the situation. Because for example, before this, since I've already had experience and then when somebody new comes in into the scene and wants to become a commentator, I give them an opportunity to, to actually do a duo with me rather than saying, no, you should be whatever you are because I'm already a hapcaster. If he or she says that um, I'm a hapcaster, can you let me try to become hapcaster? You know what? Sure, buddy, you do you, be a hardcaster. I will accommodate to your role. So you okay. become hardcaster, I'll be your support in okay. this. Yeah. So you're like a dual alum thing. <laughs> yeah, dual alum thing, kind of. Yeah, cool. Uh, well, it, it's, a, it's a skill to have, right? Um, kind of thing. Okay, so let's get into the topic for today. So first things first, um, I want to make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So when we talk about being bold and confident, do you mean on stage or on camera? Or is it both? Is it the same thing or is it different? I, I actually think it's slightly different. But, you know, what about you? I think in general, it's definitely referring to both at the same time. But mm -hmm. of course, application wise, it will be a little bit different. And I don't mind addressing both on stage and also on mm -hmm. camera as well. But we are definitely talking on a topic where we're trying to be bold on stage as well as on camera. Because right now, knowing that we're trying to cater to a lot of online audience because of yes. post PKP or post MCO. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of events are being made online. So I guess, you know what, it, you have to be, be bold both on stage and also mm -hmm. online. Okay, yeah. got it. Um, so in your opinion, how is it different being um, bold, um, being confident on stage and on camera? What's the major difference for you? Hi, Susie. <laughs> uh, for, for me, it's huge. I hope people don't mind. If you guys don't mind me speaking a little bit Malay from time to time, you just make um, it I do more have a couple of people from overseas watching, um, but speak Malay. We'll, we'll see if we can translate. Yeah? Yeah, whatever works. <laughs> yeah. 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 I will definitely try to cater to everyone on yeah. this. Okay? And okay. I will also translate it to ensure that everybody okay, has cool. the same experience, just to be fair to everyone. Uh -huh. Okay, But I'll throw in some Malay proverbs from time to time as well. Now okay. it is um, it's it's a little bit different for me because for myself I don't know about other professionals you know some people are just gifted where to them is that no problem on stage online I'm I'm good you know they're that they they're born special 
I don't think I'm born that special. Uh, I do find a difference in it because number one, if you're on stage, you're dealing with physical, uh, real audience. Uh, you can literally see their reaction and cater to their reaction to whatever you're trying to throw on stage, right? Because mm -hmm. they are they're physically there. And you can literally see how they react, their eye, eye, eye contact wise, uh, the body gestures, whether or not they're laughing, whether or not they're looking at you or they're looking at their phones or not giving a damn about whatever you're saying on stage. So it's much more easy to relate that way, you know, when you can see their reactions and you can actually accommodate to that mm -hmm. or react based on how they react back to you. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when you're on camera, when you're catering to audiences online, it's uh, it's more towards in Malay. In, in Malaysia, we call it short sniri. It's like mm -hmm. uh, you're just, how do you say it? In English, we call it like enjoying yourself. Um, yeah, you know, you're going to be so confident, so into yourself. Yeah, yeah, so into yourself. You, you got to right? assume yeah. and you, you, you got to be you know, When you're happy and you're sharing with the physical audience, they're happy with you. But then when you're at home, you when you're in front of a camera, you don't know whether they're happy with you or not. But you're judging it based on the comments and all that. Yeah. Um, so when you shot Sniri, it's like you got to be happy despite nobody's reacting back to you. You know, you're at home. Everybody's, uh, you know, it's quiet here. And you're like, you know, you're like, being all happy and giggly and you have to pray to god that people are just into all that you know you know people are like look at this guy he's like he's like over over hyped out and we are not we don't get your jokes we uh -huh. we don't get your puns we're not enjoying whatever you're doing so you're gonna have that confidence you know despite not knowing what's going back there because you're right. putting okay. on to okay. everyone i guess that's yeah. a different song i absolutely agree with you that's a major difference which is why i love uh, live because you can see reaction of people I mean you know live audiences as opposed you know you got to wait for the comment and you you really got to psych yourself up to really think you're all that right kind of thing yeah yeah I guess <laughs> okay. oh, man, it's not a fun feeling it's not a fun feeling okay so let's yeah. talk about this because now that we've got the definition and, and how it's different um is it normal to be afraid to speak in public or to the camera i mean a lot of people give themselves such a hard time and make themselves feel so bad uh, but is this fear normal you know i, I actually have stats for this i don't know we're going to use that for uh, let's for let's, see the stats. Okay, let's see let's the see stats, the stats right okay so that's actually a, a, a scientific term for this. It's actually known as glossophobia. Glossophobia. Of public speaking. Glossopho yeah, glossophobia. So mm -hmm. apparently 74% 70, of people suffer from speech anxiety. And so the fear like, is real. The fear is real. Mm -hmm. uh, there, so there are more women, about 2% more compared to guys, so about 73%. This is the total okay. population of the world, yeah? So wow. what do you think about that? Wow. Yeah. Those yeah. numbers are, those are you numbers surprised? Are crazy. Um, I mean, I, I guess not really, because I think I suffer from that as well. But, uh, you know, I know I, a lot of people. I suffer will say, from that, definitely. I think yeah. people were like, I don't believe you, you know, you can speak so confident and all that, but I still suffer from it. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm that confident to a point, like, if you, you, you know, I am, you know, I don't still experience those fear of going up on stage and all that. I still go through that phase. Uh, but you know what? Once the cameras are on, once the countdown goes from three, two, one, zero, the show has to start, and you got to throw all these feelings and you know put your game face on, go in. You know? But it's it's not easy. I think back when I started, it was just easy, just because back in the days it was more like I was given a script, and all I had to do was just follow and read through the script. Because mm -hmm. I, I think emceeing in school where they give you like a script, don't derive from script, just read it as it is. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think I think I didn't do it so well because I was just reading it without the emotion, without really into it. You know, you know. For I'll give an example. Okay, you know when a script tells you that good evening, uh, everyone, and welcome to today's mm -hmm. event. It is. Uh, uh, I am happy to see all of you here. Okay. And the way I delivered it, it doesn't sound like I'm happy to see all of you here. It, it's just basically, I'm, I'm just saying it for the, for the sake of just reading through the whole script, you know, mm -hmm. and as an audience, audience members are very smart people too. You know, when they say, I'm very happy to see all of you here, the audience will respond back by saying, 
dude, he he doesn't sound like he's happy to see any of us here. But okay, you know, we know that he's being he's being told to say all that. You know. Uh, so how do you counter that? I mean, because you're given a script, how? Because it re- really is about bringing that script to life, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is all. About yeah, that. I think probably because I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, but of course, I was still a kid back in the day. Mm-hmm. So like right now, um. I always uh, put myself every time I want to do something, uh, especially when I do hosting or emceeing. I put myself at the other end uh, of the of the spectrum. So, for example, if I was the audience, if I to, were to hear it this way, how would I react? So, if I were to change that script and say that, "Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure for me to see you today." So the audience kind of know, like, man, he sounded like he's really happy to see all of us today, like rather than. Lying about it, like I'm happy to see all of you guys today. Hopefully, you guys enjoy yourself. Man. Mm-hmm. And if I was the audience, I'd be like, "Man, this is depressing. He doesn't sound like he's happy to see any of us." You know. Um, so the difference, I guess, the experience and better understanding of how I should do things, how I should deliver, and say things. Yeah, and I, and basically mean what I say, and not okay. just saying it just for the sake of saying it. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because I'm I'm seeing another a different part of the, I'm seeing this from another angle. Um, you said change the script. Is it really changing the script or actually changing your mindset when you're delivering? Changing the way how I deliver it. So the script mm. is still the same, but the way I deliver it is that I mean what I say. So if I say okay. that I'm very happy to see you today, I should say mm-hmm. it in a tone where I'm very happy to see you today. So I don't say okay. like, hey Nina, hey man, I'm, I'm happy to see you today. Like it's like this. Is this guy for real? Yeah. Or it's yeah. like three yeah. minutes. You know? How do you I, do it? I mean, yeah. when you are you, speaking. For yeah, you, you know I mean? what? For me, uh, I what I realize is that I change the mindset. That's how mm-hmm. it's, oh, really? it's like not, how? It's, I, I I don't focus on myself anymore. I focus on the audience. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. because what I notice is that a lot of the fears that comes in prior to this is because I'm focusing too much on on, on me. And I notice this will come out when I know I'm being evaluated or judged. So sometimes mm-hmm. the, the fear on speaking in front of the public still comes out for me, even mm-hmm. though I, and I'm doing training and all that. But if I know I'm being evaluated, right, the 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 thing just <laughs> it will just come out. The gabra and the whole the whole chua <laughs> thing. Yes. You know, the, yes. the whole chua somehow will come out the moment I I the moment I know that I'm being judged. Because I'm focusing too much on myself. Right. So it's just that, shift of mindset that way. That's so. Uh, that's so true. I mean, in fact, can yeah. can I just share with this um, information that I got from the web? So apparently, yeah. um, the there's this huge fear in almost everyone, and um, it talks about feeling uncomfortable in front of the camera is a natural intersection of a few common fears. We're talking camera shyness, public speaking mm-hmm. anxiety, and stage fright. I mean, we're already scared to speak in public on stage. <laughs> Video just brings, you know, the whole thing. And camera shyness is about, you know, image. Public speaking is anxiety. Uh, anxiety is about voice. And stage fright is about action. So knowing, uh, and video brings all three, image, voice, and action. It's a perfect storm of social anxiety. <laughs> That's like crazy, right? Yeah. Even mm. I get scared I, until today. I, I have to make sure that I prepare myself because otherwise I'm like, I'll go all over the place. Yeah. 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 Mm. Interesting. Okay. So if you guys are afraid of talking in front of the camera or on stage, be rest assured you are 74% of the world population. So don't feel bad kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. I, I actually attend yeah. I actually attend yeah, I actually attended as a mindset training uh, somewhere in UK a few years mm-hmm. back. Mm-hmm. So what the trainer actually did was that he was actually seg- segmenting all the type of different, different types of phobias and fear. You have like a whole group. Uh, of people who are actually scared of reptile, another group wow. of people who are actually yeah yeah. So yeah, it's like, we, you know what? Yeah, so you have like the reptiles, uh, fear of needles, fear of a lot of weird stuff. You know the biggest, uh, even fear of height. So what this trainer actually did was that he actually brought in a uh, he, this one huge crane into the training room, and actually put in all the people on top just to for oh them to overcome God. the fear. But you know what's the most interesting part is out of the. 500 people who was in the uh, who's in the room the major population of uh, public speaking it's huge it's like almost one third of the room is there while the so, other two thirds like small small segment yeah so it's real so I think 30 percent is public speaking fear glossophobia yeah. 
Okay, yeah, it's, wow. it's not just okay. public speaking fear. It's uh, the fear of being judged. Yes. Fear of being uh, ridiculed, image. Uh, confidence, yeah. image, all of those under one category. Yep. Crazy, yes, right? Definitely. Even fear um, of being in front of, fear, yeah. of, fear of not okay. um, not uh, doing a good job, fear of yes. um, saying fear the of wrong thing. Fear of failing. So, so of everything failing just comes there. It's like your life flash before you, lah. Put that way, okay? Yeah. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, I think, the, now, I think the public speaking is just an act, but there's a lot yes. of other fears, okay. like, yeah? Right. So. Uh, for me, uh, what I do, um, I mean, you guys focus on um, the other side of the crowd. Same here. My focus is on um, the other, the audience. And Abby here is saying, change the way I deliver. That means focus on the audience. So for me, what I do is I usually because I believe in law of attraction and manifesting and visualizing. So what I do is before I go on stage and whatnot at home, I calm myself down, I close my eyes and I run through like a movie, the whole event. Like everybody's mm -hmm. amazed with what I talk and stuff like that. And it literally happens <laughs> after the event. People come up to me just like how I picture in here. So for me, that's what I do. And and I focus on, okay, what am I creating? Okay, today, because I'm the MC, it's going to be a fun, it's going to be an amazing event, you know, kind of thing. So that's what I do. My, my trick, yeah. okay? So I hope that helps uh, some of you guys out there. Now, moving along, because what time do you have to leave, huh? Somebody's got to go and pray. You better pray for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and popcorn. <laughs> okay. What's the one thing that most people get wrong about being confident or bold on stage or on camera? Flavor. Uh, what's, the, what's, the, what's the one thing that people, people again, again, how? Uh, what's the one thing that most people get wrong about being confident on on the stage or on camera? What is it that people still don't get? <laughs> you know, um, I guess different people. It, it differs between people. Uh, uh -huh. Allow me to share a little bit. Like for myself, um, the the thing about being confident on stage for me is sometimes an act. I'll be honest. Sometimes it's an act. For example, okay. for example, since I do hosting for a lot of big events, sometimes chaos or nightmares happen backstage okay and you're okay. at the front lines of things you have uh -huh. to smile and you're like Ro ladies and gentlemen chill don't worry we're sorting things out going on right here there's nothing major at the back there there's like fire and stuff you know people losing their minds and you got to keep okay. things cool like behind mm -hmm. that confidence is actually all an act because mm -hmm. uh, it, it depends it's a very situational thing as well this kind of confident thing is not easy to come by even for me you, it's, like it's more towards an act of professionalism where right I okay come in a different situation i don't know what's going to happen in an event or you know in any kind of situation where i will end up doing public speaking and in those kind mm -hmm. of situations i have to be quick on my feet because mm -hmm. uh anything can happen anything can happen you also mentioned a very interesting thing. Like everybody thinks like, whoa, you nailed it. You know, you're so good. This is peanuts. But, you know, a couple of minutes before, uh, we, what did you say? It's like. Uh, it, it's like butterflies in the stomach. It, it's a normal yeah. thing. Everybody will say that yeah. suddenly, you, uh, like usually an hour or half an hour before the event starts, I was, I already changed. I already changed. I'm already uh -huh. in the restroom, getting changed. Uh -huh. I put in my suit, put in my tie. Uh, mm -hmm. go go pee go mm -hmm. you know throw all the poop out and all that but then you know when the show's about to start like like that's when your stomach before, turns right yeah you start your stomach you turns butterflies. There's, like, butterflies i never knew there were like butterflies living in my stomach suddenly you like you feel that and it's and then, and then as the time gets closer to when it's about to start you're like oh man i'm gonna die and suddenly you want to pee you want to do everything at the same time you want to pee you want to run away you you, start you suddenly get diarrhea right yeah, I, like I, yeah, yeah. I just went to shit and now I need to shit again. I don't know why. And like, it still actually, happens to you, right? It, it still happens. I get I, Okay. Um, I did share this with a lot of professional MCs as well. Uh -huh, for uh -huh. some of them, they, they say that, you know what, I have the same feeling. But uh -huh. um, for some of the others, they're like, you know uh -huh. what, I'm used to it. You know, I'm, I'm like, I'm good. Uh -huh. For me, I'm used to it as well. But you, you just can't help it, I guess. You know, I, I wasn't born confident and all It's now this. like a fear stroke excitement, right? Once you get used to it, where yeah. it's something that you know and you look forward, uh, not look forward, but you know those feelings and you can go, yeah. Because once the camera goes on, you bring your A game, whether you like it or not, right? Yep, of correct. Of course, a couple of seconds before that, your life flashes before you. 
<laughs> right? I, I, like, I, like, I like the part where you say there's a fear there. I think the fear of making mistakes, you know, sometimes you already prepare, but uh -huh. um, I'll give an example. Usually when you do hosting or emceeing, one of the tough mm -hmm. things you have to do is that when you have two partners, right? The organizer, uh, the, the two embassies will discuss who's going to take the hard part of announcing the VIP's name, all right? Mm -hmm. Because especially when you have ministers, when you have uh, royalty coming into the event and all that, because usually the royalty names a little bit uh, complicated and long, and you have mm -hmm. to say it in one breath. Like, mm -hmm. for example, Allah Yarham, Yang Di Putuan Agong, all that, and then he has it in one breath. And you can't mess up because he's royalty. You don't mm -hmm. say, oh my God, I messed up. You know, you don't, you don't want that as well. So before the show starts, you're like, okay, I better not mess up. Or if not, I'll be exiled from the country. Uh, mm -hmm. Probably the organizer is going to hate me and all that. It, it, mm -hmm. it is scary stuff. Scary, scary stuff. Okay. So you got to make sure you, how, how do you counter that? Basically, you practice a lot, right? And you pronounce it to Yeah, it, it's all about people. practice. I think, I think it's practice okay. and always... Um, I think usually you have a lot of fears if you don't know what you're getting yourself into, especially when you're not prepared. Okay. Prepare yourself before the event. For example, a lot of people make mistakes on um, during the event itself where you don't know the proper flow, you don't know what's really going on on stage, uh, you don't know what you're talking about, you get wrong content, uh, mm -hmm. you lack content is also an issue as well. Be prepared. Mm -hmm. What I usually okay. do before, before an event is that while, while I'm on the way, I will be driving towards the venue. So during mm -hmm. during that time, I'll be rehearsing at the back of my head. For example, uh, I try to visualize what's about to happen, you know, throughout the whole mm -hmm. event. For example, mm -hmm. from the opening, how I'm gonna walk in, uh, how I'm gonna deliver it. And sometimes I tend to practice. I mm -hmm. I off the music, I off the my Spotify and I practice. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> Practice, you know, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. You know, because I I need to remember that the way I address during the event also differs between different kinds of event. So, for example, if the setting is a formal event, I don't want to go like you know a circus clown, you know, stuntman addressing ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Probably they wanted something more subtle, like ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this event. This event is probably brought to you by these organizers mm -hmm. and also sponsored sport. So it's a little bit more professional and all that. But if it was like okay. a hoo-ha event, I can go crazy and all that. Okay, yeah. got it. So Thank basically, you. I guess one of the key things to not effing up is to prepare, right? Yeah, and definitely, really, definitely. Okay, because then you're confident and you know what's happening and stuff like that. Like that so you know how else. And there's gonna bound to be changes on the day anyway. So at least you're prepared. You know how to anticipate. You know what might happen, right? Yeah, no, definitely. Okay. I I am scared when I'm not prepared. Uh, okay, me too. I over prepare. That that is how I make sure that. Oh, I that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good cool. Thing. So at least now we know. Yeah, okay. Dia memang over prepare. Terlampau lampau. Yeah, I'm OCD. If I'm not prepared, that's it. Okay. Okay. I think usually, if you over prepare, you get disappointed sometimes because sometimes you have a lot of things you want to say, but time doesn't yeah. allow. Too? Yeah, like right now. What time do you have to leave? I need to make sure this is ten minutes. No, no, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'll, okay, okay, I'll, okay, I'll, cool. I'll be fine with it. So no worries. Okay, cool. Um, okay, now to be confident and bold on stage, is there a certain mindset or belief we need to have, especially if you're having anxiety and stuff like that? What would be a healthy mindset? Um, a healthy mindset is to be confident and come be a little bit confident in yourself. The, the thing okay. is. You have come to a point of no return. Either way, okay. there's no way those there's no way for you to run. Mm -hmm. There's no way for you to hide. You but I mean, there, yeah, you you don't do it. Yeah, you, you you have nowhere to hide. You know, as okay. much as you really want to run away from all the whole situation, you got to be confident in things you can do. Okay? okay, obviously you would have no confidence if you are lacking in your preparations. That's why preparation is always number one. Because without okay. that, you, you you cannot be confident in anything. There's nothing to hold on to to yourself okay. when you want to speak in front of an audience. You okay. have nothing to say. People kind of know yeah. when you're bullshitting your way through. Uh, mm -hmm. People can read when you know you don't know shit about what you're talking about as well. That It becomes an issue. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Okay. I always put this mindset that people who are listening to you are also smart people. You should not look at them in a way where, you know, they, they're probably just blindly listening to you this whole time. But not really. Probably they're just 
judging and listening to every single bit of things you, you do say. Yeah. So you mm -hmm. got to be careful. You got to you got to think things through. You got to be well prepared and be confident in whatever that you have on your plate right now. You have to say. Okay, I, mean. I, I, I have an argument on that. Okay. My okay, argument is that is? because my case was that I over prepared. <laughs> The one that I okay. the, the one that I went out, okay. My yeah. my OHP slides was twenty pieces of paper, okay. Wow. Okay. So okay. I, you know, and then after that, I have my script ready, everything that I even rehearsed the night so before. So why didn't you go through with it? That's my question to you. My the at the moment I go up and see the people, I didn't expect the reaction. Whose reaction? Oh, Yours. Everyone, or the, the the participant, they just look at me like that. Oh no! <laughs> so it wasn't you know, the over. These, these are te these are teenagers, okay? I was in college, so image is important for me. You have to understand. <laughs> so oh, it was your no. fear. Yeah, that was my fear, right? Yeah. So it could it be possible that over preparation can also cause this to happen? No. Argument. I disagree. <laughs> I disagree. Ah, I mean. Uh, I mean, I just want to say that that kind of reaction sometimes is a good thing, sometimes is a bad thing as well. It depends because the thing is, if they were to give me, you know, sometimes you wish that they don't listen to what you're saying mm -hmm. and then they are, oh my goodness, you know, I thought you guys are just playing with the phone. For example, when I was in uni, you know, presentation, mm -hmm. and so just some presentation, you pray that nobody will care about your presentation. Just present as long as you lecture, listen, you get an A, it's good. And everybody started listening. It's like, oh my goodness, people are paying attention. Okay, so okay, so more of the story. People are listening, even if they're playing with their phone. Okay, number yeah. two. I mean, I'm really sorry. I I'm not buying your bullshit about you over preparing. Hey, I think over preparation can wait, also wait, wait, wait. Wait, No, no, no. I disagree. I think it's because your fear of image of looking bad is the one that stopped you, that superseded the over preparation thing. Okay, so I'm sorry. Please don't make I it disagree. about. I disagree. So for audience, to agree with me of over preparation is going to say yes. <laughs> no, I disagree. So I mean, guess who? What in I mean, guess who? Hi, Melissa. So let me know if fear of uh um if. Fear, um, if Amin has this fear of looking good, looking bad, that's why he's constipated on camera. Okay, my that's argument right. is over preparation. <laughs> no, I think there's nothing wrong with over preparation, and Farag agrees with me. Okay, so I got an extra. There, 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 there's, there's nothing wrong with over preparation, huh. uh, most definitely. Huh. I, th I think I agree with you. Know, it, it's not, it's, I think for Amin's side, he's not saying it's a problem, it's just that you know, he didn't expect that kind of reaction coming in. Man up, I mean, you know? grow up. <laughs> Okay, so popcorn founders are fighting, which is okay. It's normal. So what do you guys think? Hit the comment section. Okay, let's move along quickly. So let's say I'm just starting out. How can a person quickly get started on public speaking or talking in front of the camera? What are the important steps to, steps to take? What would be your advice for me if I'm just starting out? Ah, okay. Um, since we're talking specifically on, you know, public speaking, right? I also uh, want to share... Public speaking and camera as well. Yeah, public speaking, the thing is, public speaking, it's, it's more or less the same thing because it's either you're public speaking on stage with physical audience or online, or you do emceeing or hosting, it's more or less the same. You always you always start, it has to be a good storyline or you know a good story to what you're about to deliver. For example, you start off with an introduction, mm -hmm. okay? And then you jump in into your body and then mm -hmm. you go into your conclusion of things. It needs to have right, okay. a good story to it. Always remember that you don't want to speak all over the place. You know, jumping here, jumping there, and then you make the audience clueless. Like, what is this guy trying to say? You know. So when you when I say introduction, is that you make it into a good storyline where you start off kickstart. For example, if you're in public speaking, of course you want to start with either. You know, a lot of people are very creative. Rather than saying hi, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, today I'm going to be talking about this. Some people start with. Let me tell you a story about you know about you know about something and then slowly jump into what the topic is all about. So this is something and all this. Some people just okay. create it about it. So, but to put it in simplicity, you have a introduction, mm -hmm. you have a body, you mm -hmm. have a conclusion. And to be more micro about it, for example, if you want to do introduction, uh, you can either start with introducing yourself first, the topic first, and then make it into a nice one. If when you're talking about body. It's divided into three things mm -hmm. um your point mm -hmm. your uh explanation on the point and mm -hmm. then the example 
Okay. Ooh, the reason okay. is because when you see the point alone, it's not enough because people will say, what do you mean? You know, let's say, for example, I want to talk on the point of this. And mm -hmm. it, that itself does not tell the whole story to it. So you have to explain on it. And to make people uh, understand it even better is to give an example that people can relate to. So that okay. so basically after you're done with that, then people get it. Ah, I get what he's trying to say. And then you okay. jump to your second point, your third okay. point, and your fourth point. Okay, that's in writing the script, right? Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, it's exactly the same as what we tell our people when they're posting stuff as well, similar concept. But what if I'm about to start and I don't know where to start and to, oh. to immediately go and become like an esports commentator? I mean, never mind if somebody gives you the chance, that's like shooting yourself in the foot. How do I slowly skill myself? What are the steps I should take if I'm starting from zero all the way to hero? What is your advice? That's a good question. I, I think I wouldn't be able to give this advice if this was 2012 because back then I didn't I didn't know what I was doing. Okay, since nobody else okay. was there to teach uh -huh. me and do all this. But we're uh -huh. lucky enough, we're living in an era right now in 2020 where there's already a number of good esports commentators that you can actually look up to and, uh -huh. and use as reference. Uh -huh. Okay. So since we're talking specifically on doing commentaries, uh, maybe uh, not, on not commentary, like public speaking in general uh, okay. and even going yeah. on camera in general. Okay. So what would if, be your advice? Okay. Doing on this is always to plan what you're about to deliver because basically uh -huh. it's more or less like what I'm trying to tell you just now from the introduction and then the body and the conclusion. But first of all, plan it out, how, how you're going to be delivering it. For example, oh, okay. like... Yeah, plan it out. The, the plan always starts with a topic and a way to deliver and much more. After you're already done with planning it out, mapping it out from, from what you're about to deliver to how you're going to deliver and more, second would definitely be practice. Because the thing is, sometimes you have it in your head, but then when you deliver it, man, man I look like shit. You know, I mm -hmm. thought, you know, you know, when you thought you look good and then you look mm -hmm. at the camera and deliver it, man, I sound horrible. I thought I sounded good. I thought I looked good. But mm -hmm. no, I sounded like shit. So you need to practice and probably it's it's part of the preparation phase. Okay. Uh, because the more you prepare, you you start to see the moment you start to see progress uh, by preparing, you start to be more confident in yourself. That mm -hmm. is very important. All right. Okay. Because if you don't do this and then you jump straight into doing it, for example, if it was a competition or going straight mm -hmm. to doing speech probably because you have never reflected upon yourself on what you've done before you mm -hmm. feel that even if you fail you're like eh, it's okay you know i was mm -hmm. having i was setting a low bar myself you know like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if i'm in shit i was expecting this i was expecting nobody to listen to what i was saying i wasn't expecting people to like me and all that but if, re if you really do care about doing public speaking or presenting in front of a crowd and all this prepare practice and then, you know, slowly when the practice period will take some time and then you do the deliverance. You, mm -hmm. And of course, the practice also includes either you do it in front of a mirror, you practice uh, probably by having conversations with your friends, mm -hmm. getting evaluated by teachers, lecturers, your mom and dad, parents or friends mm -hmm. themselves and okay. let them give you feedback. And all this okay. Way. And of course, they need to start practicing it immediately and putting those skills to... To practice right i guess yeah right yeah like, what would be a great event or you know to sort of start and then continue that journey so oh. maybe yeah <laughs> don't don't do like i did it destroyed my hopes and dreams okay okay remember just now i told you that you prepare and then you uh -huh, uh -huh. you you prepare and then you practice right yeah. how i did back in the days was more like i prepare no practice and then jump straight into it okay i was okay. ready to my oh, my so you 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 dug your own grave lah huh? yeah i dug my own grave i was like my hopes and dreams and you know i was a kid i wasn't like mentally strong enough to take and you know i was traumatized i lost okay. to some harvard oxford kids okay they were like no in, in it was your cousin you lost to your cousin yeah i lost to my cousin again i didn't mind it i knew he was good the whole time you know so i didn't mind okay. it so much Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, you, you don't wanna, you you don't wanna, you know, not everyone has that, you know, has that determination. But you know what? I will do exactly what Flavor did. I will join the biggest public speaking competition in the country. It's okay if I fail. I will get up stronger and all that. Not everybody has that. It, it's mm -hmm. either 
you can do it or you can start mm -hmm. small by let's say for example you join a district level public speaking competition and you, mm -hmm. you go into a state level and then uh -huh. you go to a national level and if you do well there you could probably represent the country in an international level now mm -hmm. to answer the question that nina asked just now mm -hmm. is that how where do you start right good thing is right now if we're talking about presenting and doing public speaking you can always join a toastmasters club okay mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Toastmasters club is an amazing place to be because you are surrounded by people who are very fluent who knows what shit they're doing when it comes to public speaking as well. So when you're surrounded with, with this kind of environment, over time, you will start to develop and uh, develop the, how do you say, it? it becomes a casual thing where you start to speak as well as they do. Uh, mm -hmm. I picked this up from debate because I don't think I, wasn't, I was that good in debate. But over time, since I hang out with all these Oxford, Harvard debate kids, I start to pick up a little bit of how they deliver and some mm -hmm. of the, fancy fancy words that they talk about like oh you know you know mm -hmm. that sense of confidence i know what he's talking about right yeah. okay it, your environment kind of shapes you toastmasters is a really good place to be um okay. but if you want to start even smaller and let's say for example you don't want to go into that series of things you can always start by uh referring back if you're in primary school secondary school for back to your teachers english teachers they'll be more than happy to assist and provide you with a certain guidance or listening to how you deliver your speech public speaking okay so basically okay. start small keep practicing and keep getting bigger and bigger bigger gigs right yeah yeah okay i, I, I mean you I, wanted I'm to say add, something uh, yeah i would like to echo the practice okay practice is something that i agree right i mm -hmm. see definitely feel that practice is something that definitely will develop you and help you to become better okay mm -hmm. so i would i'm agree i totally agree with that but don't you also agree that the amount of practices that we actually have from the moment we are in school all the way when we are in adult world we don't have a lot of opportunity to come up to the front and actually do public speaking eh? yes we don't have that i think that's that's what's stopping a lot of people from actually taking the initiative to do it so yeah, yeah. so like example i i did a, i did a presentation skill training on monday and tuesday this week uh and what are some of the common things that i noticed that a lot of these people they do not want to take the initiative to go up to the front whenever opportunities have been given to them mm, so I agree. yeah so sometimes right when you are working in the office for example right you you have the opportunity to present but you don't want to do it what do you think about that oh i agree i mean i think this yeah. is something that you brought up which i think everyone can relate to i think i've experienced this from primary to secondary to mature trauma whole studies from diploma to degree uh mm -hmm. it's a very normal thing even people in degree so everybody is like you know what i i don't want to you know i i think it's a very sim uh, people i think it's a fear it's either the fear of it it's either that or mm -hmm. you didn't do your homework okay it's usually yeah. one of those two things if you don't do your homework yeah. definitely you know, i'm gonna raise up your hands like teacher i would like to read it no way jose okay but yeah. let's use the other one the fear part the fear we, part we also, that, yeah. um it's not just that probably some people are just malas and don't want to do it and just want to go through the whole mm. class as well because uh, i did my studies in psychology so different people have different reasonings on why they do the things they do in life as well so for example in class if they were being offered the opportunity like they don't see the importance of that opportunity because they feel yeah. that in you know they don't see the importance of it for example why should i answer this why should i raise up my hands and you know and read page 57 from a book i you know i don't get it i, I want to sit down and just do my work teacher you can also read it right what you want me to read it they, they don't understand okay for some of them they're also shy because for example let's assume that it's a it's a it's a religious class for example you're you're supposed to read a phrase from quran uh mm -hmm. and then they're worried that oh the way i deliver maybe i will read stupid and the girl who i like who's sitting over there might might hear me and then it sounds stupid and all that Probably yeah. if I was reading an English book, my English sucks, okay? And the book is like tough. And when I read it, people are going to laugh at me. Everybody has their own reason why they don't want to stand up. But in most cases, mm. um, most definitely, I, I, will, I will guarantee 95% of the time, people don't understand the importance of taking on that opportunity or where it will lead, it, uh, will lead you in the future itself. Yeah. Some people do have a good realization. You know what? I need to take this opportunity. I need it now probably in the future this will you know slowly over time it will build me to become a better person and speak in front of people yeah and also to add to that 
what I also noticed is that as as I was growing up, we also have this culture of ridiculing people who actually took the opportunity. Yes. Oh yes. Right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So ah, uh, lah ni anak kegu anak murid cikgu. So apa ah, anak? Yeah. So we have that. Yeah. Is that? Even anak cikgu. So uh, even when we are trying to speak in English, yes. people will ridicule us, uh. right? It's mm-hmm. called teacher's bad. It's called teacher's bad. Yes. A teacher's bad, mm. right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's still happening all the way in corporate, eh? That's why you do mm. like this. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. It does, it does. Alah, ni nak ampu bos. It does happen, you know. Okay, so what do you have to say about that, I mean? I'd say screw stop them it. up and stop <laughs> it. Just take the opportunity because either you like it or not, we are living in an age and era where we still need to present ourselves out there. Now mm. that we have video, we have our phone, anytime we can just go live. Oh, right? I agree. So for all these, yeah? May I just share something that in regards yeah. to, I like this topic a lot because uh-huh. what I'm in the sharing is that um, during my diploma days in UITM, uh, even during my degree studies, right? Not really my degree, probably a diploma and also in high school, a lot of cikgu selalu check up. You need to, you, you need to practice how you deliver your, uh, you know, how, how to speak English and all this mm-hmm. and especially on, you know, on delivering it verbally because in the future, it doesn't matter if you are four flat, or you get 11 A's, but if you can't speak English well, you can't deliver well, present yourself well, you will not get nowhere. And then teachers start giving example, like, dulu ada satu anak murid, cikgu ni dia for flat, tapi dia tak pandai cakap, lala tak dapat kerja, and all that, you know? Mm. And I think I took it very, very seriously because I think she's right. You know, my lecturers were right back then, my teachers, my lecturers were right. And I'm worried, especially when I was in UITM, since nobody liked it if I spoke in English. And plus, yeah. I knew I was bad in doing public speaking and all this. I was desperate uh, for opportunities to to speak and all this because I don't think after school or university I'll be given any more opportunities to stand up or speak and all this mm. because most definitely they'll be giving the opportunity to people who already have experience and if you didn't garner you didn't attain those experience back in the days you would not be getting much opportunities even more when you're working yeah, yeah. it's kind of too late but some yeah, kids I absolutely some, agree with you Ad, lah, ada budak-budak, budak-budak sekolah and budak-budak universiti, they give me a stupid answer. They were like, uh, oh jangan risau lah, public cakap English ni senang je, nanti aku lepas aku habis study tu, nanti aku ambil crash course tiga bulan, aku boleh cakap macam American lah. Oh, so, wow, really? Oh, no, it, it didn't happen lah. Yeah. So, so, you they, mean they, for them? Yeah, it, it definitely didn't happen lah. Most definitely, the, those three months crash course couldn't help him lah. Couldn't save mm-hmm. his life like that lah. You know, it doesn't work that way. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's better ways. You know, the, the experience you accumulate over time is much better than those crash courses and much more. Yeah. And also, yeah. English is a, I mean, languages are a speaking language. You need to practice it. You need to open your mouth and say, you cannot pick things up by listening or by not opening your mouth. Can I yeah. think, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think to summarize this, uh, sometimes rather than waiting for opportunity to happen, you can just grab it. Because nowadays yes. we have the technology to do it. Just take your phone. Mm. Do your first video, right? Post it online. Mm. See what happens. Definitely. Happened. <laughs> and <laughs> and you want to surround yourself with positive people. It's like the video that I Correct. shared. It, you, the number one thing to boost your confidence, get rid of those toxic people, those toxic, nasty people, get them out of your life. If they're not mm. saying nice things about you, get out. They don't need to be in your life. Okay, so listen. Yes. So all you people who are saying, uh, don't speak, don't do this, uh, please be more supportive instead of kutuking people. It's not about bodeking. It's about supporting your friend in, um, you know, doing well. And, and it's about supporting each other. So let's have, yeah. uh, let's completely change the mindset. Um, Nina, Razman, kita go to the cloud kejap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Go to the cloud Tengku Razman is also saying Steve Jobs rehearsed relentlessly for a presentation. And somebody mm. was saying um, practice a thousand times. Yeah, Susie. Susie is saying practice a thousand times. Totally. Yeah. True. Now, we're going to talk about esports in a bit, but before that, um, you know when you're already on stage, um, um, yeah, bye-bye toxic people, yeah, the first one to go out. If they are not out, make sure you call me, I'll bitch slap them, okay, out of your life, <laughs> okay? Um, yeah, so um, I have a question. Uh, when we when you're on stage, what are some of the, and this is also Haley's questions, what are some, you can't, I mean, as much as we want it to be perfect, it can't. What are some of the funniest moments you've experienced when you were the esports commentator host? What are some of the mm. awesome fuck ups you've had? And how oh, did you awesome. make an amazing comeback? Because we need yeah. those skills. 
you know. To, uh, yeah, yeah, the comeback I, skill I think is quite important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I like how you say, you know, awesome fuck ups. You know, like, yeah. Fuck ups, awesome I mean, one. what do you think this show is called? Just Langa. Uh, uh, crazy fuck ups. Okay. Uh, yeah. Crazy fuck ups is like um, the most normal, common thing is that the game's not starting, and especially when you're bec- you when you are the host. Or the or the commentator. If the game doesn't start, you can't jump into the game, and you have to keep talking shit with your partner. Right. If you're if you're doing commentaries alone, you have to keep bantering for probably 10, 15, 20 minutes uh, more than what you're supposed to, because usually a normal banter will be five to ten minutes together, mm-hmm. and that's enough for you to cover all grounds or you know having some good quality conversations. But after that, you'll be like, ah, shit, I'm already out of things to say. You know, and you look at your friend, and he has other things to say, and and you start to, you start to be creative about it. Let's talk about something different. You know, and all that. That's uh, some of the crazy. So things. that's a very good. Uh, that's a very good one. So you know, when fuck ups happen like that, where you need to extra banter, I'm not very good at this. So what what do you pull out of your skill and hat to banter? What what are your tips? Yeah, I, oh, my my tips. You better have enough knowledge to to know what you want to talk about because once you're out of ideas, you'll be like, okay, you start to wonder about things where where you know it doesn't even relate to the event no more, you know, and everybody will know. Everybody at the behind the computers behind their mobile phones that's currently listening to this show we're like yep this guy has, is out of things to say he's trying to talk about how he's okay, i have a question since you over prepared do you by any chance because this is what i would do do you yeah. have extra banter points to pull out just in case just just wondering since you over prepare uh oh yeah i have a lot i have a lot i i can okay. do um, i can do uh, because i do a four hour um esports uh esports talk course mm-hmm. for fsa mm-hmm. academy so i kind of mm-hmm. know what kind of content i want to talk for four hours and usually okay. i exceed the four hours in a duration i will talk for four hours and a half five hours because i do have all the contents needed and in case of mm-hmm. and in case anybody has any questions i'm able to respond to it and give them uh okay. the right answers and accurate answers to it and much more and go beyond beyond whatever he or she is inquiring on okay wow four hours mm. Okay, I'm like yeah. wondering when do you go to the toilet? <laughs> Sorry, that's oh, my they, question. They, they do take breaks. Um, sometimes uh-huh. I feel bad for them because sometimes I, I have so much information. I'm worried that four hours is not enough because okay. they're paying for the module and the talk. So I sometimes feel guilty. I want to make sure I give you everything your money's worth on that. Sometimes, so, you know. Okay. Wow. Yeah. This is a very good commentator, so you know who yeah, to exactly. hire. Very okay, good. the next time you go online, do you think you can share some links? Uh, we're gonna share it at the Popcorn group so that you know you mm-hmm. guys can watch him in action. Okay, so uh, Haley has another question: What's Malaysia's status in the esports hosting, considering the amount of gamers we have, and can we see it as Malaysia's forte? Is esports mm. Malaysia's forte? Oh, okay. Um, it's a good question. Um, the Malaysia's status in esports hosting. We're lacking hosts in Malaysia. I'll be I'll be really honest. In Malaysia, I know a lot of professional MCs because I do uh, do hosting and MCing for not just esports related uh, events, uh, but also for non esports events. For example, like gala dinners, annual dinners, press conferences, uh, events of whatever sorts, from sports, esports to professional to banks and all this. But when we go to esports, truth to be honest, we have like probably less than ten. Uh, professional esports MCs and hosts, okay, and wow. for the top tier ones, the top tier esports host is probably only five and below. Not much, and uh, the one that's highly been sought in the market, and usually that appears in both national and international events. And I don't m- mind mentioning a few. For example, we have uh, Faras Shab- Shababi from uh, EGJ Network. All right, uh-huh, so we have okay. Faisal Arifin. We have uh-huh. Mr. Muats. Natasha Hashem, um, we have uh, Dan- Danieli from Australia, who's currently staying in Malaysia. We have, man, those are kind of like the tier ones, okay? There's like a few others. I'm sorry if I didn't mention it with a few others. And then we have some tier twos, and we have some tier threes. Um, but I'll be honest, up to one point, I do expect in a few weekends in, in quarter three and Q4 of 2020, where there'll be like uh, some of the organizers will be desperate on hiring uh, MCs. Where since they can't find any esports MCs, they had to pick on these other MCs, which has more or less little to no knowledge on esports, and just get them in because you know we don't have a choice. Oh, wow. That guy's hired. 
that guy's because hired. Of- Nina's okay. not available. I mean, it's not available. Everybody's out. You know what? We, mm-hmm. we don't have a choice. Let's use somebody, you know? And then the mm-hmm. event doesn't go so well because that MC couldn't relate back to the audience. And the audience kind of have a good idea that the MC doesn't know shit about what he or she's talking about other than the usual question. You know, when the team finished fighting, the only question the MC will ask is, how do you feel winning that event? And the guy will be like, obviously, I'm happy. Like, what else could you ask me? You know, something like, you know, just to show that the guy's knowledgeable enough. So the okay. hosting scene in esports, we need more esports hosts. What you can do is that if you do have a little bit knowledge in esports and you practice on being a host and MC, you can actually become somebody very big and prominent in the hosting scene in esports. If you are oh, a wow. professional MC already, if you do take a little bit of your time doing a little bit of studies on the game and how to engage with the crowd, you can actually end up being an MC or a host for esports related games uh, and activities in Malaysia. I don't okay. say esports tournament because in esports, it's not just restricted to tournaments. We have forums, workshops, webinars like uh, you know, like this, yeah. talk shows, all this and more. So you have to be able to, you know, to be flexible enough to accommodate to all these kinds of events as well. What's an average pay of an esports commentator's host or host? Hmm. This was like a very booming career. It is. I mean, I'm considering to go into esports now. I, I think he'll be your anak didikan. But first, uh, get him unconstipated on camera. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, Liana Heli T A as right. Um, yeah. Okay, since this is a just langar, I'm gonna be okay. as honest as I can in the show. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nina invited me, and I think that I will do justice to everyone here. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll. I'll try to separate it into two. Okay. Uh, okay. Esports commentators and also hosts. Uh, mm-hmm. For esports commentators, averagely, uh, you'll be surprised. The pay is horrible because uh, the really, really good commentators know how to price themselves very well. But the okay. really, really normal average commentators, they they kind of lowball themselves to a point where they're destroying the market. Which, oh, which, that's normal. Uh, yeah, they're destroying the market to a really horrible pace. For example, mm-hmm. right now, you can actually hire some, some, some decent commentators for just 200 ring it for events because uh-huh. they they kind of like lowball themselves because they're desperate for events uh mm-hmm. some but funny thing enough is they brag that they're really good and all that but then they they were not confident in their ability to sell themselves in the market therefore they <laughs> place their price very, very low which is kind of stupid right mm-hmm. if they yeah. these kind of people go into the mc market we would actually shit on them and then you know yeah. like literally kick them out of the scene and not but just it, that i think it's all market to do with creatives you know kind of thing it just screws everybody fucks everybody up sorry i'm oh, saying yeah, that word again yeah, so i think everybody. if you're watching in your new please for god's sake check with older people how much you should price yourself because otherwise a couple of years down the road you're going to be shooting yourself in the foot you're going to be digging your own grave you're not going to be able to make money and then you say why am i in this industry just industry stuff because you did it yeah. it's your fault yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Murah, murah, kan? Ah, so if you if you you don't have confidence issues, you come to popcorn. We we sort you out, okay? Uh, so but that's one category. How about yeah? People. How about the yeah, other yeah, category? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Be- before I jump to the MCing and host, the, the the reason why you know people may be asking. So you think that's a shitty price? How would you justify? Why would you say that's a shitty price? Because that's considered a lot compared to the other jobs. The thing is, for uns because um doing commentaries is considered skilled labor. Because compared to, for example, right, if you if you know people who do sports commentaries, they get paid around probably a thousand five to two thousand for doing commentaries. For example, for a football match at night, right? They do commentaries for probably one hour and a half, and they get paid around one point five k, two thousand, probably three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. But esports commentaries are much harder than doing sports commentaries. Much more fast paced much ah, okay. more in-depth in, in depth in-game knowledge needed, a lot of memorization mm-hmm. as well, from understanding players' backgrounds to their history and all that. And you have to do commentaries. For some instances, you have to come com- and do commentaries as long as probably eight hours of non-stop commentaries accumulated. Wow. 200 to 300. Basically, that's why I said these guys have no idea what they're jumping themselves into, and they ruin the market for everybody else. Oh, yeah. So, okay. Yeah. They don't understand... They didn't even do their market market research or do a little bit of research uh-huh. in terms of pricing and all this. Uh-huh. And, but in for some situations, I understand why they do this. I do understand. Because uh-huh. some of the people before them fucked up the market already. 
and mm, to, so mm. they fucked it up even more over time you know mm. that that's that's what's happening okay yeah so okay. that's just to address mm. what's going is on there, right um Haley has another question is there a good amount of interest in esports commentating before cursing 200 only dub <laughs> okay oh um, yes there is there is. Oh, there is. But, okay. But the organizers were smart. The organizers knew that these guys did not know how to value themselves. So, therefore, they were brave enough to actually uh, lowball and actually force them into actually taking on these prizes as well. So, that's why I said usually these kind of commentators, they are very, they're very newbie. Some of them have done commentaries probably for four or five years, but they have no idea how you know, to make good decisions in regards to this as well. Uh, you know, probably they just never learn. Uh, mm -hmm. and uh, they they destroy the market for everybody else as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, yeah, but, so, but just to answer Liana's question, uh, is there a good amount of interest? Yes, there is a good amount of interest as well. Okay. Hayley, you can start. Go PM to P or I'll get the number for you, okay? <laughs> okay, now, um, any other skills that you can share with people uh, that you have in your bag of tricks, let's say things fuck up, what are some useful tips you would give to people? Oh man, um, come on, come on, come okay, on. We need it, yeah. it's, it's best to share mm. some incidents so that you can it's much easier to relay. Um, there was this one, but there were a few incidents which is very normal during an event where there will be technical difficulties. Technical difficulties differ, for example, normal ones, for example, the mic isn't working, it's either the battery is out or probably there's some faulty with the mic and all this. Uh, probably the speaker kind of burst it out because it was too loud and all that. When those things happen, uh, how I handled the situation during that moment was, number one, I tried to make a joke out of the situation. This is my own trick, okay? I tried to mm. make a joke out of the situation. For an example, um, you know, okay, guys, don't panic. I it, That was my fault. I, I forgot to pay the bills. You know, don't worry. Right. You know, so, so putting the blame on me rather than organizers because for mm. me, my everybody has their own uh, principles okay my principle of doing hosting and emceeing doing public speaking is that if nina the organizer pays me to do the job i'm not supposed to say shit about, I'm, I'm not supposed to put a negative light on the organizer i'm supposed to fix the situation and become the savior of the event not say that uh, the organizer is stupid they, they must have fucked things up i'm sorry guys you know and try to make myself look good and putting blame somebody else or, you know, or I can just say, no, I know that during that situation, the one who was at fault was the production people. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Rather than putting the blame on them because they can't save themselves. They cannot hold the mic. It's not our fault. You know, they, they cannot yeah. protect them. So me being the frontliner, I needed, I, I, I threw in a joke. And people people kind of knew shit happened. But they kind of like, hey, you know what? This MC is taking the blame, you know? And, like, and it mm. was kind of like, okay, okay, it's back. Okay, guys, chill. I, I told you, this was actually part of the plan. You thought that blackout was faulty. Mm. No, 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 That was, we we wanted to make it dramatic. You guys panic a little bit. You know, just to change right. okay. a little bit. Okay, yeah. because, oh, um, oh, because I, you're I, right. I like the mindset there, yeah. I, I yeah, really love the mindset there. Because you are hired by the organizers, right? And, and yeah. as the MC, we, it's we, about we, yeah. setting the tone. Everything, Correct. Right? We're, we're actually not hired. Truth to be honest, MCs are not hired to just read a script. Yes. We're hired for our professionalism in uh, handling situations. Because a lot mm -hmm. of situations happen. For example, if the VIP comes late, how do you handle the situation? If they whisper to your ears, kill some time, how do you handle it? If there was a fire at the back of the stage, how, how do, do you, you handle, handle it? it? All right. mm -hmm. And don't don't scream, shout, don't run away from the stage. You know, how do you handle the situation? And uh, they hire for the professionalism, not just for the exactly. sort of reading. Because if you think about it, you are the face of the organizer. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, you're you're the front man of everything or front girl of everything. Yeah. yeah. I, I like that mindset because you can actually apply it for everything. Even if you're a trainer, you're yes. a coach, yes. right? If you're an MC, yeah. uh, you 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 are the frontliner, right? Everything, the buck stops at you. Love okay. it. Huh? So basically, put the blame um, and joke about it, and make light, and and make sure you and uh, you take care of the experience and the mood of the people, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, what are the worst things that you could do as a public speaker or a content creator? Um, I think you covered one. It, make it, the organizers it, look bad. <laughs> yeah, making the organizers look bad is one. 
don't don't put yourself over your head like, okay because this is different it's public speaking and so mc host and talents okay uh -huh. if you are high as a public speaker you're not hired but as if you're a talent as for example your mc host caster commentator you're hired by the organizer don't think of yourself any anything higher than them they're the one hiring you you not saying you don't have the right but you know just be mindful of the things that you do or say on stage and also off stage as well mm -hmm. a lot of people are not being mindful for example people say the f word um people say the you know people are you know when people cross the line and make the joke too much let's say for example you know they think it's okay but then no it's not you know they're like no 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 it messed up you know mm -hmm. um for, exa for an example sometimes you have to be careful what you say because there was an incident where I had an annual dinner where it was not me who was the MC. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, I was MCing with another girl. She was a radio FM host, mm -hmm. right? She was kind of belaga and she thinks she knows everything and all that. She made a mistake where mm -hmm. she did not. Uh, she kind of like called a guy on stage and then made a joke about uh, his wife or something like that, and then. The thing is, his wife just passed away a week ago, and then it was no funny story. Everybody was like gasping. It's like, oh so my and, god! So I was like, holy shit, we're in trouble. It's like this girl really, you know, you know, you, know, you, 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 you know. So, so for me, sometimes I just go down stage and do a little bit of research on the guy, and say that like, can I do this? And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm kind of chill, you know, just to check whether or not he or she is okay with it, you know. Man, that was so bad. I was like, I had to step in and say, hey, you know. You know what? You know, you know. I had to become the guy. Like, I, I, no. The speaker go wish. Let's jump into something else. You know, something like that. Oh man, it was. Don't, don't, okay. don't, don't assume. Don't, don't, no, don't cross the line. Don't mm. curse. You can curse mm. in a different way. What the freaking, you know, to, you know, fix yourself. You know, because sometimes when you do commentaries and MCs and all this, you're on live TV on national TV. They can mm -hmm. actually sue you for saying this shit. Yeah. 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 So basically, you got to know that the place and what's appropriate and what's not appropriate, right? Yeah, you, you, you got to know. You got to know. You, um, you know. Here's one more question. Um, what do, where is that question? What do, hang on, what do sports commentators think of esports commentators? Do they even think or they don't know? You guys exist. Um, some of the sports commentators that I met was football commentators, and uh -huh. they were just they were just surprised by the amount of hours that we have to do commentaries compared to them. That's one uh -huh. thing. Uh -huh. Okay, uh, because they were like, dude, when we when we do commentary, we host for one hour and half kita balik lah. Sometimes, like for example, if it was a football game at night, right? Uh -huh. They just commentate for that night and then go back home. For normal uh -huh. esports commentators, we start at we come as early as eight. We start mm -hmm. our matches at around 10 or 10 30 or 11. we go back mm -hmm. around 10 p.m because we have to and then our rest and all that the the amount of things that we have to say and do throughout every single game from pre-game drafting in game post game and mm -hmm. into commercial breaks and then uh, doing it on repeat for for, for example four best of trees or three best of trees, where there's a possibility of a minimum of six games and a maximum of nine games or 12 games. That's nuts. Sports commentators are like, holy shit, you guys can speak this much. And how many days do you guys work in a week? Or uh, sometimes two days. And you have to come back the next day and keep talking. Man, it's draining. Yeah. Uh -huh. So for sports commentators, this is very uncommon because they were like, we don't work as long as you guys, but we okay. definitely get paid more than you guys. You guys are just, you guys, yeah, sports commentators, they admit, we get paid better than you guys, but you guys do more shit than us. Yeah. Okay. So is it easy if I were a sports commentator to transition to esports commentary or the other way around? Just wondering. No, just 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 because we say that doing esports commentary is harder. But mm. sometimes if you don't know if you if I want to transition into doing football, as much as it's much slower pace compared to how I do commentaries in esports, as much as I don't need to study as much because in in esports you have what 10 different games every time you have to change a different game you have to change your whole mindset and cast a different kind of game it's not like football uh -huh. where football is just one game but uh -huh. if you have if you don't know jack shit about football in the end you can't do good football commentary or even basketball commentary baseball okay. football badminton and all that prop prop the thing is 
um, you know, it takes a lot of time to practice and understanding of the game as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and okay. probably your deliverance cannot be the same. There's a reason why football commentators deliver in such a way compared to mm -hmm. sport because that is what the audience are used to. That is what mm -hmm. the audience love and feel it's not because mm -hmm. they're less esports so, it's because that is the right way i see so is it easy to change this way or the other way just wondering i guess both uh -huh. ways have your own you know have uh -huh. your own it, it, well. it requires a little bit of adjusting i guess yeah, a little it requires a little bit of adjusting yeah okay one more question uh harith from facebook is asking harith rizwan is the toda chair comfortable <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> I have yeah. been, okay, although, you know, I, I have been using this Toda chair for more than a year now. Unfortunately, I should be changing my gaming chair because uh, the seat has already been like, sorry? Wondering. Do you want to sell that? Harry, if you want to uh, buy it? No, I, no I, I wouldn't I wouldn't sell the chair because the, the bottom part is already like the hot case. Um, okay. And, well, you know, I want to, you know, probably I'll still keep using it, but... Uh, yeah, I would definitely buy a new Toda chair. I'm waiting to see if they are about to launch a new one. So mm -hmm. if they launch a new one, probably I'll purchase that one. But so far, everything else good. Everything's in good condition, but except for the seating part because he's sitting on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, since I go to the gym and I sweat and sit down, that's why this happens. It's bad. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Yeah. okay. What's the investment for a Toda chair? Just wondering. It's about 1000 plus. Uh, oh, yeah? What, okay, this is the premium one. So this is okay. a premium one. So it's about uh, if you can get the normal one for uh, 900, 800, I forgot. They have a, you know, new offers right now, even better than before, how much I got it before. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So what are the best practices of an amazing public speaker? Uh, and what's the difference between an amazing speaker and an average one? Can I not answer the first one? Because the first one, I think I've already uh, okay. answered it by saying that, you know, the best practice is always the best practices is always to practice. You don't practice, mm. you don't get nowhere. But okay, if, you're already, if you're already at a point, just just want to say that if you're already at a point that you're already good, if you don't need practice, then you can just skip that part. Sure, fine. You know, mm. if you're already mm. good at it. Um, but mm. the second question again, what is it? Um, what's the difference between an amazing one and an average? Host, um speaker. it's very hard you know when you see a person you can't see, it's very hard for you to tell let's for example if i put all three of us here uh, mm -hmm. in front of us and i said oh how do i say that i'm better and i mean and nina is better than myself and all this probably people can't tell people will only be able to tell during the event itself okay mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. for, for, for uh, I how I evaluate MCs is that if the MC is a really really good one, if he were to appear on stage, he should be able to capture my attention into listening in. Okay. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I'll give an example. Okay. I always tell this example to all my students who actually end up want to take classes to actually do MCing and hosting. Is that do you know like for example VIPs because I do MCing for Prime Minister and also ministers and all this. This ministers and and Prime Minister and all these YB, Yang Berhormat, Yang Berusia, uh, mm -hmm. Yang Ber, Berbahagia and all this, right? They they go to events almost every day. And sometimes, like if you're the Prime Minister, you go to events, probably three, four events, five events in a day. And they get to hear different kinds of MCs. And up to one point, they just, they, they're tired, you know, they don't, don't care. Talk. Yeah, they're like, tired. You know, the MC, I know what MC is going to do. The MC is going to call my name. The MC is mm -hmm. gonna call me up to give a speech. The MC is gonna okay. do all. So that. how do you what? stand out? Yeah. Yeah, correct. So how do you stand out? For example, um, uh, when you, for example, usually when a VIP comes in, you will announce their arrival. You have to announce it in a way where they feel welcome to the event, not just, not just, for example, mengumumkan ketibaan yang berbahagia, je. And Daro Al Amin Kanambentas di Brazilkan. You know, that monotonous sound, it like, doesn't sound good vibe. Everybody stand up and all that. Like, if I were to change it, mengumumkan ketibaan yang berhormat, yang Daro Al Amin ke dalam Dewan. It's like, oh shit, the, the guy hears it and he feels like, you know what? You know, because they wear suit, right? It's like, oh damn. The guy calls out my name this way. I can't, you know, I need to be like, you know, I feel more confident. I need to live up to it. <laughs> when that was like, yeah, yeah, that's my name right there, you know, deep inside, you know. You know, even the prime minister, think about it, he would want the host or MC to announce his name in a way where he's being respected in the how you deliver his name. Not just yang 
uh, se- yang yang berhormat uh, perdana menteri yang kelamaan ya Tan Sri Shamudin. Okay, no so, offense, but the older I'm, I'm sorry if you all the people are here, but the older style of MCing does that right, where you're supposed to be like constipated, like I mean, and oh, like, yeah. like that, right? No, but some, uh, here, here's the thing. You just have to read this with you. If the event is like a grand event where you can go that high, go that way. But even mm. in a professional setting as well, even a professional setting, let's say, for example, you go now, you can also see it in a hype way as well. So, for mm. example, let's put it down a notch and say, mengumumkan yang uh, ketibaan yang berhormat. So, basically, it's not so hype, but still sound like... Hypeable you know, compared to the other one where I'm going to sleep. Compared to mengumumkan ketibaan, you know, it's not like... Uh, you can so we, tell. You can um, definitely tell. Would it be correct if I were to say that what makes you different from a professional to an average MC is about being able to create that experience for your yes, people? Yes, definitely for sure. Okay, especially got it. like thank you. Especially when I mean, uh, for sometimes I'm I'm a little bit ballsy on stage where I can make jokes with the datos and YBs just because mm-hmm. I know that these small small jokes are not crossing the line but enough to capture their attention or make them smile right. a little bit somewhere okay. along. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So that that goes to another question. How do you push that boundary to be ballsy? And when it's you know when it's still appropriate without crossing the uh 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 line, you know uh, what I mean? No, yeah. no, no, no. Because because you, being ballsy does get you attention, and that's what makes you there. But then you could push that slightly and become like that that prasan uh, DJ you were talking about. I play it safe by a, a number of ways. For example, um. Uh, you you know you, you know some people they have a lot a lot of people uh, a lot of MPs tries to make jokes on stage you know mm. when you try to make a joke on a person try mm-hmm. to make that joke uh, for this my everybody has their own style okay I try to make the joke on myself first okay. so that that guy or that girl doesn't feel that he or she is being attacked when I were right. to do these jokes on them you know like okay. like for example like for example. Like you know, sometimes you go over the top. For example, let's try a singing competition. Whew, look at that girl sing. She was so amazing. There's a reason why she's singing in this competition and not me, man. If the organizers specifically told me to not sing, okay, right? If if okay. I started singing, they would not be hiring me anymore. You know, because I so I put myself in a bad spot, okay. and then I put whoever that person is in a good spot, or okay. or I put put them in a bad spot, but I put myself in a much Worst spot, get it? So you, so okay, you, you or she feel so offended about it. But that's okay. a style. That's a okay, style. Actually, that's quite clever because you're you're sort of allowing them to build a relationship with you right at the start, while you're kind of doing your research about them. And as the night progresses, um, you're creating that relationship and you know, slightly bending it as and pushing the boundaries a little bit and a little bit, right? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, very good uh, tip there. Um, I mean, yeah. do you have anything to add? Yeah. If you want to be aware of timing. Uh, if yes. Uh, ah, tu lah. Dah pukul sepuluh dah ni. Okay. So, um, I guess um, one more tip from you. I guess before we finish it off, how do? What's your tip for engaging your audience, having that that stage presence, and how do you engage with an audience? What's your best mm. tip for that? Um, when you want to engage your audience, uh, something I tell people is that you need to understand what kind of audience you're engaging with. Okay, you you have a good feel about what the event's about, what kind of audience that you're going to be reaching out to. For example, if it was a gala dinner, you start to do a little bit of research on what's the age group of the audience. If they're like from 30 to 40, it's a different kind of audience. If they're like kids, what kind of jokes you can do on them. If they're like teenagers from 18 to 25 to 30, different kind of things. So, and you know, that's that's age group. And then you see what kind of, uh, what kind of people they are. Sometimes you, you have a good feel. Let's say for example, um, there's a lot of, uh, l- let's try um, a lot of different uh, race. For example, there's a lot of Malays in the house, there's a lot of Chinese in the house, a lot of Indians. It makes a lot of difference because if there was a, Malay- a lot of Malays in the house, I can actually do some Malay jokes and all this. 
if there was like a lot of Chinese house, you can do some Chinese jokes. If there was a lot of Indians and all this, um, you can also segregate by the type of people. For example, if, if I do emceeing for Comic Fiesta or Ayimagaki and all this, so they're like the anime kind of people, right? So if I throw in some anime jokes, throwing some, they would understand. So you always need to understand the crowd, whoever you're you're engaging with when okay, you're doing public all okay. the time. You I think that's fantastic really, because you know? it goes back to understanding your customers and the persona and hooking them with yeah. things which are relevant to them. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. you're speaking directly to them. Um, what about stage presence? Any tips on that? Um, something I didn't address is that um, is that you know other than preparing yourself, preparing is not just about what you're about to deliver and how you deliver it but also boils down to how uh, everything from head to toe, from how you feel, how fresh you feel. You know, that fresh feeling when you just took a shower and wearing new clothes, getting mm. your hair done, feeling fresh, wearing a nice suit and tie and all that, feeling good, looking good, and you have good practice. Once you have all that, you ha all of this um, builds up your confidence in, in engaging with, with the crowd. Sometimes okay. for me personally, when I don't look good, when I don't feel good, especially when I have a stomach ache, when, I, when I'm bloated, when I'm bloated because I eat like half an hour before the event, no good. Try to not eat two hours before the event so that okay. um, you're not too full and all that, you know? Look good, feel mm -hmm. good, and you know, make yourself well equipped with information of what you're about to deliver. That okay. way you're gonna do wonders for yeah. sure. I absolutely agree with you. Okay, um, one last question. What are your plans moving forward? What's next for Muhammad Farouk Flavor? Muhammad Flavor Farouk, sorry. <laughs> um, I'm actually launching a talent agency for, Ooh, uh, for uh, MCs, hosts, mm -hmm. uh, sports talents in here in Malaysia. Uh, I believe that I'm not going to become a host and MC forever in my life. I believe that one day, I will need to actually pass on this this knowledge and the skills to others, uh, mm -hmm. you know, to build up not just the esports scene but also the the hosting and emceeing industry for the whole country itself. And hopefully, you know, this will uh, will benefit everyone in the future. I understand that at one point this is also to hopefully become a little bit income for myself. But other than that, and hopefully it will become an income for you in the future. All right, mm -hmm. so for you to discover if you're interested to actually end up being a talent. Yeah, I will be sharing all my knowledge and expertise, uh, and hopefully you would actually make good use of all this information and knowledge into becoming better in the future and become a prominent figure as a host, MC, commentator, talent, you know, in the eyes of, you know, clients and all this. Yeah, that's okay. that's my plan. I find, right. I, I find, I'm just curious about this. What's the youngest, talent that you've known in Malaysia right now? Because eSport is actually quite a, it's, the crowd is very young. So... The youngest talent? Uh, youngest talent uh, that you know. What, 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 can I, what kind of talent are we talking about? Are you talking about hosts, MC, or I'm players? Talking about e I'm talking about eSports e itself. eSports? Um, there's an eight-year-old um, who plays PUBG Mobile, and there's yeah. like a 10-year-old who plays Mobile Legends and all this. Yeah, there's a lot of youngsters out there. Yeah. Those are the players. The MC itself is there like a young MC that's like taking out the scene right now, or um, below be, uh, like seventeen se below eighteen years old? Not really, not not yet, not yet. Okay. Um, but probably like eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, that's very really common. Very really common. 19, some, people, yeah. Yeah, some people when during the diplomas they already started doing MCs and all this. One of them I know is Leslie. She did her MC. MC work during study, same like how I did. So while I was like 18, I was already doing MCing already, just like she did. So it was, she was, you know, we were just doing this MC while we were doing our studies. Yeah, mm -hmm. But below 18, not really, not really. Okay. Also, that's when, when you're in uni, that's when you get all the, you don't need permission, you know what I mean? <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, the thing is, it, it also depends on opportunity. I'll be honest. Um, when when I did my diploma in UITM, I approached a lot of parties for opportunities to become an MC. Throughout my three years of study, none of them gave me the opportunity because they've already oh, had wow. other people who are much more experienced. So since I have no experience, they didn't have confidence in me. Mm -hmm. So 
uh, they were like, it's okay, we already, you know, okay, they will be nice. They said, you know what, we will consider. But I know that at the back of their head, they kind of like more or less like turning me down because they already have someone already. Um, but during my degree, since I did my American degree in communication and psychology, uh, I had a few opportunities to do hosting like small, small gigs, still scripted. And then once they found out, yeah, you know what, this guy can probably handle big events. So I did all the big events in my uni from the pageant to singing competition to the marathon. These are all internal competitions. Okay? And um, what is it? The the cultural night, all the big events in uni are all done by myself like that. So basically it started from small into becoming something big. And then I was okay. discovered by outsiders. Hence my first big event, my first uh, paid event was actually the Malaysian United run, which was mm. like, I don't think anybody else had like a first event outside like that big of a scale, you know, you'll get something small, but that was like, I have no idea why that guy gave me the opportunity. Uh, it was actually Terrence Das. He's actually a professional MC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Terrence. Yeah. yeah. He's good. So, okay. Yeah. He's very so, good. Yeah. Very good. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. It was a uh, Terrence gave me a different opportunity. Uh, he gave me a different event. It wasn't Terence Das. It was Charles Mohan. Okay. Yeah, Good it was too. Charles Mohan. Terence Das was actually is actually the the main MC for Level Up. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yes, yeah, but, yes, correct. But he gave me a different opportunity. It was Charles Mohan. He was a TV host for NTV Seven before this. Yeah, and now oh. he's doing MC and doing other businesses as well. Okay, uh, Marissa, just join us. We're about to finish off. Um, Hey, Sus. Okay, so um, thank you very much. Um, we're not going to go into the rapid round fire. I'm just going to limit the questions because oh, we're God. really running out of time. Uh, but what are three things a person can do right now to get started on being bold on stage and on camera? Go. Um, you can start by just practicing in front of a in front of a mirror first. You know, like you do that, and mm -hmm. then hopefully in the future you get to go on a bigger stage. Okay, just one. Okay. Oh, um, two more. Okay. Two more? Two more. What, what, what was it? What was it again? Again. Uh, two more tips that people can do right now to get uh, started on uh, public speaking, being bold on stage. Number one is talk in front of the camera. Uh, do your research. Do research. Do, okay. Do research. That should be number one. Do your do okay. your research. Number two is prepare yourself, and number three, practice. Yeah, that's definitely it. Yeah, that's three. Okay. Go. Got it. Okay. Um, hang on. Eh? Uh, what do you think is the number one secret to being a great public speaker? that is most underestimated by everyone else? Um, uh, research and studies. Uh, get yourself equipped with a lot of information so that you have more things to deliver. For example, I don't have much, you know, my, my, my syllabus of grammar capabilities are very low. That's what, uh, for example, sometimes I get jealous over other people who can actually use much more complicated words compared to myself. Uh, mm -hmm. And the more knowledge you have, the more things you can actually deliver and share out with other people as well. And experience gets you to more places. Yeah, knowledge is power. Knowledge is fine. Okay, got it. So prepare, prepare, get yourself knowledge. Okay. Um, if you had one advice to give someone out there who's toying with the idea of public speaking or going on camera, what would it be? One advice. Uh, one advice is uh, be confident in yourself. You've already done all your preparations. It's your time to shine, you know? Yeah, be confident. And you know what? Uh, there's no turning back. Uh, do your best because everybody's gonna be looking at every single every single thing that you do, from hands, your eyes, your hand movements, the words you say, and you do. Yeah. So basically, just do it, lah. Just do it, lah. Just langga. Okay. So I mean, if somebody told to just do it, <laughs> back then, what would you have done? <laughs> when you over prepare yourself. <laughs> I I would just have done it. <laughs> for the, for you mean one. nobody stopped you when you ran away? No, my lecturer just got stunned and she just oh. <laughs> I think your lecture is not gonna pull you back. Come on, me. Oh man. I tell you, I tell you, Dude. if I was in class, I mean, I would have pulled you a bit slap you up here. No, you are not quitting. You go back in there and you give it. I mean, it's like yeah. this. I mean, I mean, it's like this. He's like, dia dah malu, dia tak boleh deliver. He's like man, having a brain fart moment. Dia dah keluar. Yeah. And then the classmate all saw him. He must be like, oh shit, aku dah malu ni. I'm not going to come in that way. Exactly. No, no, no. I would have, like, see, I would have come and say, I'm no, sorry. He had like, no, 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 no. He had a tummy <laughs> diarrhea. He had to handle, but it's all okay now. And he's going to present. 
I don't think I don't think the I, I don't think I mean wants you to tell the class that yeah, he had I mean, diarrhea. Okay, that's I have one question. question. You're okay, not me. I have one question. Was there uh, like a hot girl in the audience? There were two. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> I knew it! I knew it! <laughs> Nina's not a good wingman, lah. Just saying. <laughs> no. Oh, well, I was never. Yeah. Okay, right. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Farouk. I mean, yeah. if we were to summarize today's event, what what are you getting? What's your key takeaway from today? Practice, practice. Uh, I will in practice. practice over prepare. Practice. Okay. Uh, be, yeah, practice over prepare. That's for me. Okay, I would say uh, um, for me it would be practice. I would say just do it. Uh, failure is not an option based on it. And and I do think it's about trying, trying, trying. Practice, practice, practice practice a thousand times because um, what Farouk basically did, oh sorry, Flavor basically did is he kept going at it one event after another because it's about getting yourself comfortable and getting better and better. So you can only improve. If you quit at one, you're not going to make it, honestly. You got to keep trying. Right. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. And everybody's afraid anyway, so you got to take your chance. You got to just do it. So that would be the two things that I would take away from here. Okay, and number three, sorry, I forgot, it pays to Prasan, which is Popcorn's another hashtag. Okay, so you have just Langa and it pays to Prasan, especially when you're speaking alone on camera. Okay, thank yeah. you so much. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Don't, okay. don't go yet. We'll get back to you, okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, thank, so you thank you so much, Nina. Thank you so much. I mean, you guys should say thank you to Popcorn for, for doing an amazing job. I love the questions. I have to say this is one of the most, I've done a lot of talks, a lot of uh, webinars and all this. I have to say this is one of the most enjoyable uh, really? conversations. <laughs> uh, really? Really good questions that I think the audience would appreciate as well. I mean, if I was audience, I'd like, man, they were asking all the juicy questions. Like, yeah. And... I think I kind of enjoyed it because uh, the, I'm I'm allowed to talk about this here since everybody's yes, being real. Yes. And, uh, it's just Langa, yeah. yeah. Mm, and no I don't have worried. to be so stuck up and like, okay, um, mm. so, jawapan politik eh, uh, saya tak boleh beri keterangan. That no one, you and Amin can Sorry. have a show because we say he's constipated. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. Thank you so Actually, much. what's your one <laughs> advice to Amin eh, because he's usually constipated on camera, but hari ni actually quite good. What would be your advice to Amin to unconstipate himself? I mean, I mean, in all honesty, I think I, I mean they're great throughout the whole segment. Uh, I mean, you have to remember, compared to most people uh, out there, you know, you know, some people they check out you, dude. I'm not good at speaking English, and me, I'm like, bro, you're literally talking to me in English right now, and you sound fine. What do you mean? You know, you're like confused. Yeah. Okay, like yeah. I had, I'm, if, if I had a question to Amin, I'll be like, which part that you need help with? So far, you sound fine. Being an MC or talking public speaking, okay, this is one advice I give to everyone that I didn't tell everyone else yet, okay? Talking publicly is just like talking to a friend. You know, I mean, I mean, you know, we're all friends, right? The only difference is that we're not talking to only two people right now, but we're talking to 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000 people, a million people, just basically just talking to uh, more people compared to the usual. That's all. Yeah. It's all about being friendly. Not trying to show that you're better than everybody else, but more to it's being friend with everybody else together. That is what public speaking is all about. Talking to the public. It's just like talking with friends. Yeah. Oh, that's the best advice ever. And you kept it at the end. Everybody laughed already. <laughs> I know. Mm. Yes, uh, no, Pauline but... is saying, you must need to stop fixing Amin. Okay. <laughs> hey, Pauline, shut up. Okay, I have to say, Amin is very good and chill today. Maybe because he's late and he's tired, but he's very good today. Today, not constipated. On no, the Amin, day Amin, where we have a guy to so unconstipate you, you're unconstipated. So, yeah. I, I, have I would advice. say that too, because I'm less prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you should be less prepared. <laughs> Eh, hey, kenapa yeah. lagi banyak orang uh, dekat pukul 10.30 ni? I mean, does that mean we need to start at 9? <laughs> Let us know in the comment section uh, if we need to start at 9 because that's what Sujimi late, told late us. Yeah. Hmm? I don't, I don't it's a late, late night talk show with Nina and I mean, Yay, welcome. So, yeah. give us change. Yeah. Enjoy this show, Flavor. Hey, yeah, thank you yes. so much. Is Hailey still here? Okay, um, I'm, okay, since Viv is here, I would like to see Viv perform I mean, instead of a sharing session, maybe one of the nights we do like a concert. What do you think? <laughs> I'm okay with that. Let's do that. 
We can do yeah? that. Yeah, okay. So, babe, you Sorry. heard me. Apa dia? We can always include concerts. Remember last time when we did our event, we have like uh, yes. a segment for the artists, right? So mm-hmm. I think we should start doing that again. Huh? Maybe we can do that. that, that take... Okay, that will take time. Okay, Nina Kabo that Nina juga yang kena apa ni? That Nina, she's sterile lah. We'll always ask things. Okay, wait, let me finish. Leave Farouk on the camera because he likes us, okay? What? Wait, I need to look for my script. Okay, well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You guys should all be mis- mystical, magical unicorns on stage after this because Flavor has unloaded all the stuff uh, and has been, you know, uh, empowered you with all the secrets and whatnot to be amazing on camera and on stage. Yeah. So make sure you follow him on social media. What's your social media? Um, yes, so basically, about the social media, if you just uh, slash F A R F L A V A. So Farouk is my real name. Uh, Flavor is my Indian name. So F A R is for Farouk, and F L A V A is Flavor. So Far Flavor. So Facebook slash Far Flavor, Instagram slash Far Flavor. Uh, yeah. Okay. So basically, and, it's uh, a flavor that's far, far flavor. Okay. Got it. Yeah, far yeah. flavor. Yeah, it's a distance flavor. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, feel free, to, feel free to add, and um, if you want to connect in LinkedIn, I'm also available on LinkedIn. Um, yes. Just, uh, just drop a. You just drop a message so I know who you are because for Facebook there's a lot of requests. So there's like a, there's like a thousand requests I have not accepted, not intentionally. So LinkedIn I, is better. Um, Facebook is better actually because um, okay, it's easier to connect in Facebook. But LinkedIn is a much more professional environment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so if you want to connect with you, send a message. Would that be LinkedIn or Facebook? Um, I guess both. You know, I think at least people have a choice to. Okay, got it. Okay, so choose your poison social media people okay um all right I hope so, I would have this with camera <laughs> okay. no 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 he's so much chill Did actually you, i need okay. to go out after this because i need to go to podium to get ttdi to lay out with some friends uh oh so, you know, i have, I have oh a meeting God. at 9 30 which i miss huh. so basically okay. I, I so now i have to go I to mean, the i have to tell gym. you something do you remember oh. last year when we did the bazaar ramadan video yeah. yeah, the one that I met is him lah, but I didn't ask money from him. Ah, yeah, I, uh, I don't know if you recognize him because you know he was coming back with his ayam pochi or whatever. Yeah. We, uh, we were looking for money. I mean, in the video, if you saw the video, yeah. So that was what we did. Okay, so what's happening the rest of the week? I mean, uh, we have a full week ahead. Uh, Sujimi's coming back next week. Yay! Yep. All right, okay. And then I'm- we have Alan Pang, and then we have Ash Bolin the week after, and Yasmin Katir after that. Okay, so all the way till September, right? It is, yeah. Okay, so if you know someone or who would really appreciate insights from today's show, please make sure you tag them. Follow us on all our social media. That's PopConFest, P-O-P-C-O-N-F-E-S-T, on Instagram. Uh, we're on Telegram right now as well. Um, also on Facebook group, which is the one you're on now, LinkedIn, and also on YouTube. Okay, make sure you follow us. Now, if you have any suggestions on talks or whatever you want to learn, please make sure you hit the comment section. And I guess that's it for tonight. Yep, I had I, I had fun tonight. I, I think tonight. We'll see fun. you next week. Uh, then you have been popcorn. Yep, I'll Where see you next week. Up? Good night. Okay. Bye. All right, thank you so much, guys. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh, you're most welcome. How about far of flavor? <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.